So it was Easter the other day. And the day before, the White House announced that Easter this year would actually fall on Transgender Day of Visibility Day, I guess. And uh, here's, what's, here's what's interesting. I'm not surprised they did this. And many, uh, many uh, Christians, many individual uh, Easter worshipers, I'm sorry, that's the appropriate term, were rightfully upset that the White House decided to remove religious terms and then make this announcement, which seems to push against their ideology with a new woke ideology. Now, I can understand people are being mad about it. And I see all the news and I'm like, well, that's interesting. To be fair, Easter does fall on different days. So next year won't be the same. But the crazy thing was when questioned on it, Biden denied actually doing it. And I think there's a great revelation here. Joe Biden, the human, did not know that someone else launched this holiday declaration and signed his name to it. And I think that's pretty revealing. So we'll talk about that, the aftermath, the responses on social media. We've got some big news pertaining to, I guess, World War Three. An Iranian embassy was bombed. Now they're saying uh, Israel did it and it was in Syria. And so this is pushing us to the brink. Then, of course, Vladimir Putin has apparently got uh, death ray guns that fry holes in people's brains, according to 60 Minutes. And what I love about all this is that 60 Minutes, they do this big, long conspiracy thing where a whistleblower comes out and says, Russia has energy weapons that can fry holes in our brains. And I'm like, you want me to believe that Russian agents with secret devices driving around to various parts of the world, spies, are finding out where our agents are, blasting sonic energy weapons through walls to fry holes in their brains to damage them. And at the same time, you don't want me to think anything about that bridge collapse you didn't investigate. That was an accident. Don't look here. Nothing. Everything's fine. Look, by all means, it may be an accident. But now I'm supposed to believe that the big bad Russia that we're at war with has special energy weapons. I mean, maybe they do, but I just love how selective the propaganda is. They claimed on 60 Minutes this guy was a whistleblower. He's not a whistleblower. The CIA told him to do it. Here's your here's your card. Go on the TV and tell him this so we can drum up some some anti-Russia sentiment. We'll talk about that and a lot more. Before we do, my friends, head over to castbrew.com and buy coffee. Why? It's delicious. Everyone's favorite is Appalachian Nights. It's my personal favorite. I have a glass every morning. I've been doing espresso, actually, with it. We put it in and then we press the espresso button. But uh, Rise of the Birdo Jr. is also very good if you like a light roast. And uh, I, I recommend if you're a fan of Appalachian Nights to try the Stand Your Grounds, the medium roast, because it's comparable, uh, comparable flavor. We do have K-Cups. And when you buy from CastBrew.com, you are supporting our show and our physical location in Martinsburg, West Virginia, and many, many more to come. So we're planning the next live show in Martinsburg. We're really excited for this. But in order to actually attend, you got to be a member. So go to TimCast.com, click Join Us, become a member. Because when we do announce the next date for the live event in Martinsburg, it's only emails out to our members. We don't do public announcements. Why? It is a private event, members only, with no public advertising, just an email to our existing members. As a member, you will get access to our Discord server, which if you're not familiar with, is basically a big chat room. You can hang out with like-minded individuals and you can network. We really hope you do this because networking is the most powerful tool in winning a culture war. And you'll also get to listen to the uncensored members only show coming up tonight at 10 p.m., which is going to be hilarious and not family friendly. Joining us tonight to talk about this and everything else is Michael Malice. Hello, sirs. Um, I was all excited because first of all, can we agree that uh, if Trump becomes president again, that Trans Day of Visibility will be on April Fools when he's in the White House. Mm. You think he'll move it one day? I think he'll he'll absolutely. I think he'll absolutely will move it one day, yeah. and it would kind of be a little bit inappropriate because like April Fools, you know, that kind of the big well, reveal. But I kind of feel like Biden did that already, and so I tweeted this. It's kind of offensive that Biden made Trans Day of Visibility on April first because it's April Fools' Day. But we, we we should say this. We should say this. We're, we're going to talk about it in the in the second. Yes, so. and also I, it wouldn't be funny. I, 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 the the Michelle Obama jokes must have been just like interminable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and this is the one. Maybe thing, we'll save them for this, the members. This, this is the one thing with the boomers. It's just like okay, I get it. The Michelle Obama jokes. The only person who gets a pass on that one, when it's actually funny, is you know God rest her soul, Joan Rivers, because well, uh, uh, that right. was just. So I I did it. So since it is April Fools, I did bring. I I talked to two. Uh, friends of mine who are prominent personalities, and I said, would it be a good idea for me to wear a Trudeau mask on the air, which I got made? And I asked Roseanne Barr, and I asked Megan McCain, and one of them said it would be absolutely hilarious, and the other one said, it will F you up. So I'll, I'll let you all guess who said which, but I have the mask and I'm not wearing it. And <laughs> it, would be, it would be wildly inappropriate. I'm glad that you're, you're spreading awareness on the inappropriate nature of what Trudeau has done yeah. and why we shouldn't replicate that, that bad behavior. Thank exactly you, Michael. It's correct. very responsible. Yes. And a good reminder that Aladdin is a great movie. 
some of the greatest songs. So it is a good. It's, that's where the Proud Boys come from. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I'm proud of your boy. Uh, I, I mean, how would you describe yourself career-wise for those that may not know who you are? Oh, hi. I am Michael Malice. You can find me at malice.locals.com, Twitter at Michael Malice, author. I've got like what? I think I got like eleven books. I was going to launch my author, uh, my um, uh, um, crowdfunding my for my graphic novel oh. here, mm. but I will be going to Japan. For the first time ever on Friday, Konnichiwa, I think you people Where? say. Um, and you I, people? You heard me. And it's going to be, uh, well, you have heard me. I'm only 5%. I'll take it. But I'm really, really, really excited. Maybe people in the, in the after show can some give me some, uh, give some, money. Where, where, some places to go. <laughs> some <questions. laughs> Uh, Dude, so, that's awesome! I'm really, really yeah. excited. Well, I want to hear about I, this. I want to, I want to, I want to give a shout out while I, while I uh, can. It's just a, a little passive shout out. One of the. Uh, most memorable moments of my life was when I went to Japan to uh, document the Fukushima recovery effort with Oh, Rikowski. wow, yeah, yeah. Mm. And on our way there, we stopped at a small town before with our fixer. She was an older woman and uh, and her, at that time, I guess it was her boyfriend. I think she had been divorced, she had kids. We, we, we were in this dive bar, it was very, very small, microscopic, jammed shoulder to shoulder to sit in, in, uh, in this tiny little picnic bench in the corner having sake, uh, sake, and we sang um, Aladdin together, me and this Japanese woman, and it was that, you know, I can show you the world. Yeah, a whole new world. A whole new world. Yeah. She ended up dying of cancer a couple of years later. Your she, singing's not that bad. Well, it was actually going into Fukushima back and forth all the oh, time. Oh, crap. Man. Yeah. Not the resonating Oh. Wow. So, Dang. That's but I just wanted the story and the Aladdin reference. Right. And that's why I was like, Japan, Aladdin, I wanted Whoa. to bring that up because I'll never forget that being in this Japanese dive bar where everyone sings karaoke and gets drunk and, uh, uh, you know, sad this woman passed, but she, she and many older people, were, their attitude was, we're going to help people do what they have to do in this. She wasn't the, the, the same as the, the people who went into the reactor. As they, were, sure. they, they were old and they were like, my life is over and I will give this gift to, to the next generation. But she, she had a similar thing. Well, like, here's what I can do. I can help people come in to get the story and I think we'll be okay because we're old. And, but, I uh, don't get that thinking at all. But we'll, 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 we'll move on with the show. I just okay, wanted to mention sorry. that because, you know, shout out to the hard workers there in, right. in Japan. Yeah. Uh, Shane Cashman. Shane Cashman, happy to be here. I'm a reverend and a doctor because I gave a website $20. And I'm the author of the Inverted World series and uh, upcoming the Inverted World live show should be soon. It's yeah, looking right, it's really, really good. It's funny because it's a year and eight, a year yeah. and six months behind. <laughs> it looks good though. Yeah. It looks good. Yeah. We finally finished the new building. Yep. Ian's hanging out. Hi. What's good? You look smooth, dude. Yeah. I just came from a funeral. You're kind of like a life Did hacker. Did you really? Yeah. No. Oh. oh. It's intense, but I can feel it. I can feel as if you were. I, I would consider you a life hacker at this point. I oh, think yeah? he, he I like looks that. more like a life coach, don't you think? Yo, I like that. Yeah. I'm good at that. I can motivate you. Yeah, you will. You're motivating anything. me right now. Yeah. <laughs> that mask is like, it makes me think of the monkey paw. Uh, it's not the thing where you, once you, it's like the mask where you put it on Whoa. and you can't take it off. Ian, you're going full Roseanne. <laughs> oh, I did that on accident. <laughs> Whoa. Um, where it like control, you become a new character when you put the mask on and you can't get it off like that you Jim mean, Carrey movie. You mean the, the mask? The mask? Yeah. That Jim Carrey movie what, about the mask, whatever it's called. Isn't there a thing where they put a hand on and then they couldn't get it off their arm no that's no that, that's the monkey's what? paws three wishes but the yeah, wishes are like, it was different than but, that though let's let's well, I've, I've, I've got a lot of jokes hope you enjoy my intro as much as i did let's ask a question whose wires are more scrambled fetterman's or ian's <laughs> this is like well today <laughs> fat guy but in a year we'll see because i got a lot of hope for fetterman you know that movie the mask where the guy puts on a hand <laughs> yeah, there's a movie where the guy puts the on like hand a mask. glove it's called the mask he puts on a glove and it takes over his arm or something do you, you know what i'm talking he has to like cut off his own arm Wait, that's evil dead no it could have been yeah. chat like a crypt keeper or something like i don't know old how, about we, how about we jump into the show yeah let's i like this i want to hear from serge before we go <laughs> yeah uh, i ain't got much to say pleasure to see you michael uh All right, there's, there's, keep there, it up, yeah. there's much humor in making fun of joe biden here's the story so uh from the post-millennial joe biden denies proclaiming easter sunday trans day trans visibility day i didn't do that and then i love this he did quick, quick for those that don't know it was i believe on saturday or no 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 i believe it was the it was friday they announced that March 31st would be Transgender Day of Visibility. We actually have the proclamation here, March 29th. A proclamation on Transgender Day of Visibility, which they said would fall on March 31st, which uh, is Easter. So, of course, you, you guys remember when they were, when they, uh, who was it who called uh, Christians Easter worshipers? Do you remember that one? No, that's no, a good one. It was like a big scandal, too. But so this, this obviously offended a Sounds lot of like people. Sounds like Kamala. Saying, uh, uh, you know, on Fox News, you had, uh, uh, they had a, a guest on today who said, not only is Easter potentially the most important day, if not the most important day for Christians, as a Christian, it's the most important day for humanity. 
And so for Joe Biden to basically say we're doing this transgender thing on Easter but, was shockingly offensive to people. But was it on Easter? Or was it on March 31st that he didn't put two and two together? Well, no, here's here's the big revelation, I suppose. In while being asked, uh, so he was asked about Speaker Johnson saying, uh, you know, via the pool, Speaker Johnson called it outrageous that Easter Sunday was transgender day of visibility. What do you say to Speaker Johnson? Biden respond. He's thoroughly uninformed. Question, uninformed how? Biden, I didn't do that. He did do it. I think the revelation here that everyone's been waiting for, hard evidence dropped right in your lap. These statements being put out by Joe Biden are not from Joe Biden. Joe Biden doesn't sign off on them. Joe Biden has no idea what's being said in his name. And I guess you can say there's more than one president. Yeah. But, but does anyone surprised by this? No. Even no, Democrats? But, no. But it's but it's basically the but, the hard it's no longer circumstantial wait, evidence. But hold on. Is he okay? I I I just want to make sure I want to steal man this as much as I can as someone who gave money to Biden the primaries and which has paid off in dividends. Um, <laughs> I mean, thank the, you for hurting me so much. The, the lulls alone. <laughs> Your point, student loans. Point being, <laughs> the student lulls. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my student loans got paid off uh, when I went to school in the forties. Um, <laughs> is he saying I didn't do that? I didn't put it on Easter, meaning I just put on March thirty first. What was it last year? Right, I think he's yeah. been this this I'll look it day up. for the past few. That's years. That's what I'm saying. So wait, so no. wait, wasn't it? No, wasn't it? That's what I want to like find out. Years? No, it's it's different every. It was year. on April 9th last year. Yeah. Okay. But that's oh, that's that outrageous. That was the argument then. everyone that was making. That is completely crazy. It is that was the it, argument everyone was making against him yesterday. I'm glad we I'm glad we settled that. Because that's crazy. Either he's lying and he did know, or he didn't know, and someone was like, "Okay, America, Christian, what's their like most celebrated holiday? Let's introduce a holiday on their holiday to disrupt this." That's awful. No, no, no. Here's the crazy thing: is that London declared the day as well. London put up the new flag, which has two triangles. Oh wow! And they said celebrating. No, you're joking. I'm not kidding. No. And they said celebrating Transgender Day of Visibility. And Can I was like, see that the new flag, please? Let, let, me, let, me, let me pull oh, it. I got, I got to search for it. Plus, plus, they made Trans Day on Easter a few days before the eclipse, a but few days before CERN's wait, going wait, off. Is it Trans Day or Trans Day of Visibility? Because it's probably also Trans Day. Oh, oh for sure. There's, there's probably problem. two. Is there a trans And isn't the whole point of being trans is that you're not visible and that you're passing? Oh, but yes. yeah. Biden doesn't get it yet. He does. He's just not there. Yeah, he's just he's still learning. Maybe he'll get it. Yeah, he's here we go. When he grows oh, up. Like, you're, uh, Mayor oh, of London wow. said on Trans Day of Visibility, we celebrate London's trans community as they strive to live authentically and safely. And they have this flag where it's got two triangles now. Now, I do think it's important to point out the mayor of London had tweeted uh, the past several years the same day. So I believe this day had been like, I guess, esoterically the Trans Day of Visibility for regular, you know, for your everyday person. They have no idea what it is. And so the White House decided to get on board with it or something like it that. It was March 31st, March 31st right. last year. So now, it was two years in a row. My, my, I, I, what, what I'm really curious about is, What's is, the is there- triangle? I have no idea. But my question is, is there any group of people that has more holidays, months, et cetera, that like, like- Christians. <laughs> Christians have their, their own holidays. Jews have their own holidays. Muslims have their own holidays. Any non-religion? Indian people have their own holidays. I'm saying like, this is a quote unquote marginalized group that has more celebrations and, and days than most other groups. Because it's not? a fad. It's a cult. It's like, no, it's like, it's like the AIDS ribbon. Everything had to be AIDS and then I just forgot about it. Yeah, but Pink this ribbons. keeps evolving into something much more give nefarious. It, give it, you know what? Here's the thing. I, I'm going to, let me just take a second because I think conservatives, which I'm not one, but conservatives don't know how to take a win. People should think back about 2016 where every five minutes it was refugees welcome when we need mass Muslim migration to the West and Linda Sarsour was everywhere. Yeah. Now, bitch, can I say that word? Yeah, I we so. try not to because there's kids watching. Okay. But now that broad is on the side of a milk cart. <laughs> now that broad's on the side of a milk cart right. and you can't find her anywhere because right. they just shut up about well, it. Well, well. So hold on. Let me, let me just finish my thought. I think as soon as this becomes politically radioactive, which is increasingly becoming, they're just going to stop talking about it. I agree. But I think the Sarsour thing was that she, there, there were a bunch of uh, articles written by prominent newspapers about how she was claiming this crazy stuff about Jews. And then Democrats were just like, she's cut off. But that didn't work for Rashid Tlaibri uh, uh, Ilhan Omar. Yeah, because they're funded through grassroots by like, like uh, Ilhan Omar is, is, is funded mostly from the fringes of the internet. Rashid Tlaib, similarly, they have their 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 pockets of support. AOC, a, this, the, all the squad members, majority of their their contributions come from outside their districts, from small donors all across the country. For Linda Sarsour, she's an activist who has to be hired. She like when when she does an event, she has to go to someone and say, "Would you donate to us?" A bunch of articles come out with her, the Women's March, 
accusing them of being anti-Semites and believing crazy conspiracy theories. And then she starts to slowly disappear but from the limelight. Broadly speaking, though, those refugee welcome signs vanished. They stopped talking about yeah. it completely. Do you think this will be harder for people to divorce from because so many people have their children rolled up into this cult? The, there's some feminist I, uh, 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 scholar. I forget her name and I apologize. She just did this whole, uh, they went viral uh, on, on the internet where she's like, this is going to be really hard because for someone to accept that they did this to their kid mm -hmm. is a big pill to swallow. So you have to, as a mom, yep. keep doubling down. Right. And she's correct. And that is what makes this terrifying. I agree with that. It's going to yep. be tough for people to let go of it because you can't given your kids puberty blockers you can't. You know, who knows what oh that's that drives me so crazy oh. when they're like oh you could just pause puberty it's like yeah because if someone's mal malnourished yeah. and you give them food they get their natural height obviously right. it's right? fine we've never done it before yeah but we know it's fine that was all sarcasm in case anyone listening didn't know if yeah. you starve someone of nutrition in their right. early years they do not grow to their big Let's, height you're in kidding years. <laughs> no it turns out yeah if you stunt someone's I, I, growth it I, doesn't like magic i'm proof of, i'm proof of this <laughs> well let's 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 shift to the other element of the story Joe Biden clearly is, is clearly not in charge. I mean, most people have speculated to this. I think that I think what we're seeing is Joe Biden is in charge only so far. And I think you take a look at Afghanistan as to what as, as an example of this. When you have leadership like Joe Biden, you get the Afghanistan debacle. Clearly, there's no strategy as to how we're exiting. No plan to how we leave the Air Force Base in, ba you know, the Bagram Air Force Base. Everything falls apart because Biden wanted to do it. He wanted to move the deadline to September 11th. It was the 11th, right? And it all falls yeah. apart. But then at the same time, you look at the statements that are being released for political reasons, and it has nothing to do with Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. Someone else decided to put out the statement without him knowing. Or, or there's another possibility. He completely forgot he did. That's logical. <laughs> but I, I, I think he's always been, and even his campaign, he's a party hack it's like when super tuesday in 2020 bernie sanders was leading in like i think literally every state except for minnesota which is klobuchar and buddha judge and klobuchar got the phone call from someone and that monday they're like oh we're endorsing joe biden and joe biden got the nomination mm -hmm. he's yep. just a clearly a function of the democratic yeah. party i don't think there's any secret about this he's a vessel so, yeah a vessel he's, yes. a, he's a, a career plagiarist yes. too and now they're plagiarizing him to a degree because there's people with their hands inside of them. Wow. And then they'll, so he doesn't know Do you know want that him to be more of a leader? I'd rather have the like institution running itself than have like this like senile corpse. No, I, 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 no I'd rather have Biden in charge. I, I don't know. I think who's I, Biden though? Like who was ever Biden? Like who was he ever? Biden in charge is a guy falling up the stairs over and over again. They let me plug the in the lamp, The institution man. is like warrantless wiretapping and and and, and oh, yeah, hunting right. down J6ers. Correct. No, that's fair. Yeah, yes. Yeah, like But no, no, I think Biden wants to hunt down those J6ers. The way he talks about them? Yeah. He believes it. I agree. I he mean, believes it. With the same type of fervor he had the crime bill in 92. Yes. Like he yes, did have power yes, yes. Yeah, at some point and like to Great wield it. Shame. Did you Thank did you. you see the protester at his speech like last week? No. Mm -hmm. She was yelling something about healthcare and then he just goes everybody needs healthcare. <laughs> And it was like, wow. you looked into his face when he was talking, and it was, there's nothing there. Okay, I want to just get back to what the second triangle is in that flag. Here's the yeah, thing. It's a mirror. I stepped back the little- It's a mirror? That's what I got out of it. No, did you look <laughs> it up? Come on. No, no, I like that interpretation. I stepped back a little because I feel like politics is getting stupider and stupider, and Absolutely. it's just getting exhausting to me. And I know it's not just because I'm a, a, an ancient boomer, but at this point, it's just like, like really- it's supposed to wear you out. Uh, you know what this reminds me of? Uh, there's this documentary I saw about North Korea, right? And this journalist returned to North Korea, and he's talking to his two guides, male and female, at the ostrich ranch outside Pyongyang. And the guy's like, you know, the last time I was here, I talked to you guys about gays and lesbians. They're like, yeah, 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 we don't have that here. He goes, well, what about people who are bi? And the guy just goes, ah, what? <laughs> and like, that's what I feel now with the second triangle. It's like, what? what, what, what well, are we, it's, it's, it's like the, when Matt Walsh it, was in Africa for his yeah, yeah, documentary. Like, what, like, what, what are you what even are we talking, talking about? about? So it's uh, the second triangle is for uh, the second coming of Christ. Black, also happened black and brown people and bisexuals. But that's on but the left is, is the black and brown. No, the, the left triangle is transgender and the right black and brown is bi, bi, bisexuals. Old school LGBT But why is the black there thing twice is what I'm saying. There's two different types of black. Because some bisexuals can be you trans. Know, I gotta, I gotta be honest, black. like the, the craziest thing about the whole pride flag is, and, and I think someone did a man on the street where they were just like, the, 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 the pride flag declaration is that black people are gay. But, but it's not, it's not I'm, Michael's over here Dude. laughing at me. I'm kind of insulted. Why are you laughing at me? A lot of the problems with the movement is that LGBTQIA plus all are lumped into one group when a guy's like, wait, wait, hey, so, I'm me. Let me just kind of. So, so I put this mask on. Is that drag? It's both. It's it. Yeah. So, but but no. But the 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 thing is race drag. So the so <laughs> no, regular drag. Black people <laughs> as a whole. Right. Okay. Every black person, 
Every brown person is part of the LGBT community, according to this flag. It's not an exaggeration. That's literally their declaration. What happened to the circle? Didn't that mean something? There was a circle. Yeah, that, mm. the circle, I believe, was the asexuals. So now they don't exist? Is that not in here? Well, have you, did you ever see... Did you look deep what, Was enough? it Miller? Like some, some company put out the, the ultimate pride flag we talked uh, yeah. about. Oh, time. yeah, that was a good And one. it was like 800 flags. That's why just, I thought, th thought of that when you put this up. Man, I thought it was a joke. It's people that want to belong. That is where all, all this is all coming from, man. People want to belong. And they, they're going to they're, they're they're add some call one more thing. We don't give them something to belong they're to. They're going to add one more thing to the flag and totally get rid of the original flag. And then Dude, some things will move in to get rid of these things. I think they're going to move the two triangles together. And then it's going to look like the Confederate battle flag. And then two more triangles from the top and bottom will come together and look like and the Star of David. Laughing at Gay me. Confederacy. And I'm Gay trying so hard to make yeah. these great intellectual points. No, that's and, a good and point. Have, and have deep insight over here. Yeah, and then I added on to it, but he was laughing and didn't hear me. Because there was <laughs> more triangles making the Star of David. Dude, it's going to happen. There was a big gay Nazi movement in California, uh, like in the 50s. So it could swerve back to like the Confederacy. All know? I can hear right now is the Larry David music. So <laughs> how do you... <laughs> <laughs> it's just like... I'm with you on the on the... How just blow, blown my mind can be, and how much? Is this old? Is that it? No, you're, you're fatigued. No. You got mental fatigue, yeah, which fatigue. is understandable. Okay. But yeah. how do you how do you handle it? You personally, you write books, you create things on your own. How do you inspire other people? Because this is fatiguing as hell to me. I, I, I'm you know, I, I, daily I, like I, almost I, terrified. I, I just I want you guys to hear the words from Biden himself. Maybe that's why Biden's like this. Can I can, I, can, I, too can I reassure you all? Please, that, please. Thanks, everybody. And by the way. Say hello to oyster bunnies. Come on up, bunnies. Get up here so they can oyster see. Oyster bunnies? <laughs> Wait, can we see the oyster bunnies? Do they come no. up? Yeah, they do. Do they come up? Yeah. Oyster bunnies? One's got a pair of glasses Is this a on. pearls before swine joke? <laughs> he oyster said bunnies. Easter something. E oyster, oyster bunnies. Oyster bunnies. Biden clearly said oyster bunnies. Wow. Yeah, he does. Wow. Show the I mean, he, he misspoke, but I mean, there we go. Oh, this but this is like a my cement. Tell I, me about the I, rabbits, Jill. I did, I did want to jump right into this story, but I think I will uh, for the next segment because yeah, I think there's a strong overlap. This is a story from the free press, quote, I'm 28 and I'm scheduled to die in May. You know why this young woman is going to be killed? Because she's bored. Jeez. Yeah, she was. Uh, Sign me up. You know what? At this point, I can. Make, make, you're making the case. I this, need to leave the earth. I don't like it here anymore. Michael's like one more oyster bunny. One more triangle in that flat. Like just enough. enough. All right. Let me read this. Let me read this. Uh, so the, the real reason they say is that she's depressed. But here, here let me read for you. Zariah Terbeek, 28, expects to be euthanized in early May. Her plan, she said, is to be cremated. I did not want to burden my partner with having to keep the grave tidy. Oh, my God. We have not picked an urn yet, but that will be my new house. And she had an urn emoji. So they said that she was born in, uh, uh, who lives in a Dutch town near the German border, once had ambitions to become a psychiatrist, but she was never able to muster the will to finish school or start a career. She said she was hobbled by her depression and autism and borderline personality disorder. Now she was tired of living despite... She said be, being in love with her boyfriend, 40, uh, her boyfriend, a 40 year old IT programmer, she doesn't have borderline. living in a nice house with her two cats. She recalled her psychiatrist telling her there's nothing more we can do for you. It's never going to get any better. Oh, my God. Yes. Insanity. And she said, I've always I, I was always very clear that if it doesn't get better, I can't mm. do this anymore. Now, let's pause real quick. Mm. I want to rewind you all back to the only point of my life that mattered when I was on Joe Rogan with the Jayagata and Jack Dorsey. And the point they made to me, the point they made to me was that the reason they were taking all these actions in suspending people and banning people who are, who are, who are critical or insulting to trans people was because of the risk of suicide. Mm. I don't know how the same political elements, the same political factions support these two ideologies, ideologies at the same time, that you would actually euthanize a 28 year old because she's bored. I get it. It says depression. But she's talking about having a nice house, being in love with a 40-year-old IT programmer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like she wants for anything. She's like, I'm depressed. Well, you have no purpose. You have no, you have no okay. goal or no mission, no will. So here we have governments in Europe and Canada saying, we will kill you for the lightest homelessness, autism, m like minor uh, d uh, crippling injuries. Like, I mean, minors and like you lost a foot or something. Mm -hmm. They told one, one veteran, like, have you considered medical assistance in dying? And at the same time, they were like, we must ban hate speech because it could lead people to suicide.
But here, I, I, let me talk about this at length because I think this is something that I, I think all of us are in a position to help a lot of people because when people are dealing with things like suicidal ideation, depression, you always feel like you're the only one who's had this feeling, right? And when more people talk about it, the more you're in a position to get help. Uh, I, I know several people who have committed suicide. This is something that I take very seriously and, and think should be discussed more. I had Richard Hanani on my show. It's airing this Wednesday. And we talked about this, about the whole slippery slope. And the point he made, and I wish I'd thought of my answer at the time, and I'm thinking about I thought about after he left uh, the recording was he's like, look, I was very depressed in as a teen. If I was told, you know, um, it's not going to get better, like maybe that I should have that option on the table. But I'm like, but that's the whole point. Like when you're in that state, you're of the belief that it never gets better. Heather B. Armstrong, she had a blog called Deuce.com. I just finished her book over the weekend called The Valedictorian of Being Dead, where they mm. tried to basically kill her. 10 times to reboot her brain. It worked for a bit, but then she took her own life wow. a couple of years ago. Point being, I, I am I am very, the thing that the pro-life people get right the most, right, is when you start devaluing the sanctity of life and when a doctor just, in the same way that a doctor looks at a kid for five minutes, goes puberty blockers, that's fine, goodbye. That you're gonna be like, I'm depressed, I've been depressed all my life. Well, it's not gonna get better here. You want the pill, whatever. I, I am terrified as someone who is ostensibly in some context amenable to eugenics of where this is going. And it's yep. not a slippery slope, it's an elevator shaft. I think it's like and a, it's terrifying It's a me. culmination of what Nietzsche said about God is dead. I mean, his meaning behind it, like if there's no God in society, you know, this is bad, which leads to, in my opinion, nihilism, which we're in widespread nihilism. And, uh, and I, I think Michael might agree with this is like one of my favorite stories is uh the myth of sisyphus like, yes, with camus yes, yeah. and you know he deals with this whole topic in the entire essay and life is absurd embrace it sisyphus must of course have been happy in his toiling yes. with the boulder and people aren't thinking of this anymore they're being sold nihilism and which is also attached to materialism she's happy with her house this story says when the the person walks in to take her life she might have a coffee first yeah sit down have a coffee Lay down on the couch. I'll take your life. You know, all very nonchalant. Which is, in my opinion, that's the 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 peak of what not of what Nietzsche was warning about years ago. Now here we are, we're totally divorced from God, totally attached to materialism, and we and we don't have anything. We don't okay. have anything. Can anymore. I say one more thing? I'm positive there's more than one person listening to us right now who's had struggles or is struggling with suicide ideation. For sure. So please, if you're listening to this and you've thought about this, just give them, call the hotline and give it a shot, right? There's no downside. Just please do me that favor because there's no downside, but there's a possibility they can help you. Mm -hmm. So if someone out there is listening and hoping for a sign that someone is hearing them, yeah. let that be your and sign. It's not, and, and it's cliche to say it though, but like you're not the only person. You know, if they have a name, I've if, gone through that. If I know they that have feeling. a name for it it's not unique to you right yeah exactly and and get ripped get ripped yeah. start working out you, get in the sunlight too you for, said you were for uh i'm half joking i want it to sound fun but a lot of depression not all of it but a lot of it yes you can cure through exercise running mm -hmm. walking yes and if you're male take magnesium because i think almost every guy's magnesium deficient that helps your or and try that hurts your mental health a lot magnesium and gaba G -A -B -A. that's in green vegetables at chlorophyll okay At the center of every chlor chlorophyll molecules one magnesium it's so powerful, such a powerful molecule. Uh, what you said earlier, you were amenable to eugenics, kind of jokingly, but in, were you meaning like- Not jokingly. Because you know, I'm kind of with you, like putting strong genetics together makes strong, robust that's children. That's not what I meant. What it's like mean? when people are like, uh, have their genes tested, it's like, okay, if we have a kid, the kid's gonna have some kind of crippling, like like definitely gonna have stillbirth. Like that's eugenics. Like that's an example of eugenics that everyone practices. Right. So people probably feel like my genetics are not worthy to pass Yours? on. Yours? No, people probably feel, I have felt like this over throughout my life. But I you, get were, you, of had, like, you were in commercial. Yeah, exactly. Someone succeeding can actually be depressed. Like Chris Cornell, of Robin course, Williams. These, it's so sad to watch these people lose Rob, it. Yeah, of course. But like when they feel like their genetics aren't valuable enough to pass on, like what do you just get them work out? You get your, your horizontal gene translation well, active by working here, out and, and getting your genes activated. Here's, here's, I want to say something about this. This 40-year-old boyfriend, they claim they're in love. And when she was told it doesn't get better, he said, okay, I guess. That's crazy to me. Yep. The I, I did a segment on this at 4 p.m. where I basically said I think the issue is that uh, I'll, I'll give you the quick version of the story. We were we were driving in the, we went to the bridge yesterday because we're about an hour from the Francis Kaki Bridge. We went and checked it out. Hordes of people everywhere just staring on the on the on the co on like on the on the water line just looking at this disaster. On the way back, uh, I put on some 90s hits and Longview from Green Day came on. And there's that line in the song where he's like. Twiddle my thumb just for a bit, you know, I'm watch. I flip the channel, I'm watching t TV for a couple hours, flip the channels, but nothing's on. And I thought to myself, like, this song is basically talking about this guy being like, I'm lazy. 
And he's saying, I sit around for a couple hours watching TV. And I'm like, but that's that's literally life right now for millennials and yeah. for Gen Z's yeah. sitting in your room on the screen. And I was thinking, you know, where's this guy's dad in Green Day? You know, Billy Joe Armstrong's dad to come in and be like, get off your ass and go out there and get a job or something. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about life before TV or with limited TV when there were very few TV programs on. Man, when I was a kid, it, if it was Sunday, you're not watching TV. In Chicago, you're lucky if you can watch Hercules on Sunday. And then maybe at night you had you had you had Simpsons. Right. Yeah. But during the day, it's like you better go outside and do yeah, something. Yeah. What we're what I think we're seeing now with this young woman, with many young people in today's generation, is mom and dad go to work, kid goes to school, the kid doesn't learn anything from their parents. So why do we get the bridge disaster? Someone tweeted this out. They said boomers didn't pass down their knowledge to the next generation. And I'm like, I don't think that's true of every boomer, but I think it is true that boomers went off to work while their kids were at school. And then when their kids were getting older, they said, what do you want to do with your life, son? Instead of saying, here's what I've done. Let me teach you what I have. So now you're looking at Boeing failures. You're looking at two bridge uh, bridges getting hit. The, there was in Oklahoma, yeah. Oklahoma yep. but the bridge didn't go down. It got hit by a barge. And this is what someone said. They're like, boomers stopped passing down knowledge the way our previous generations used to. So I, I think that's that's largely true and it's going to get worse. And what we're going to see is more young people being like, I have no reason to be alive. But it's real, real quick. My final thought is, how could you not be depressed if there is no light at the end of the tunnel? You have nothing to live for, no drive, no passion. Nothing was ever instilled in you as a child as to what your life goals are. So just like, I'm bored and there's nothing to and, do. And there's more. My friend um, Marsha ran something called Cuddle Parties, right? And you laugh at it, ha, ha, ha. A bunch of people get together, cuddle, okay, whatever. But she's <laughs> like, human beings need physical contact. And this is something that is endemic to us as people. I think what the internet has done has been a, a, a positive in the sense that when I was a kid, if you were the weird kid in high school, you were by yourself. Now you could be the weird kid in high school talking to the other weird kid in high school. And you have a community. But to your point, everyone would go outside. You see other people and talk mm -hmm. to other people if you're in your room all the time and you don't communicate with anybody other than through the computer that is not psychologically healthy and that is like the solitary confinement and if yep. you get on in your room all the time and you do communicate with people but you're still in your room on your computer that's another kind of depression yes it's like it mm -hmm. still feels yes. better than not talking to people i know yesterday i was going through this but it's just not the same as being out and about and around people in different environments. There's uh people talk about incels, but they talk about that now there's a more commonly fem cells, which just means like female version of the same thing. And there were a couple of viral videos of literally like 20 something year old attractive women being like, I have no friends. I don't know how to meet people. So I sit at home all day and I do nothing. And it's just like really and it, it re weird. And I'm to sorry. See. It really bothers me if people think that's funny. No, it's yeah. not funny. Because no, it's, it's like, if these are people who are, you're allowed to be young and stupid. You know what I mean? We've all have been and some of us still are. Like if, if someone is saying, I have no friends and, and I don't know what to do about it, that person is crying for help. And I, I can see the humor in one context, but like, guys, Dude, like this is yeah. a real problem. So, Go to a skate park. It, like there's so many women that I know in b between the ages of 25 and 35 that don't have kids that are phenomenal women that would be amazing parents. And there's, I know so many guys that don't have girlfriends. I'm like, where, what has happened in the last 11 years? How can we undo this? Is it just, are we just as a lost generation? People should just get, I don't think people should just give up. No, no. No, I, Ian, we should not. Ian. Absolutely not give up. I think, God. I, I think it's, it's this weird, I'm, I, I, I will say, I don't find it to be a coincidental that the same faction of people who think there are too many people believe that climate change is a big problem and yeah. also are the ones implementing policies like yes, medical assistance Dude, and dying. These are the Clearly people, they don't like, they think there's too many people. These are the people who are having their children hold Posters saying we have 12 years to live because of the climate like they're raising kids to but, not believe in a future But I think the the reality is People of of, of weak mental fortitude mm -hmm. with no support are gonna fall through the cracks Yes, yeah, yeah. so it is eugenics and the other intentional or otherwise the other thing that uh, with the rise of podcasts I'm sure you've all heard this is that people look at podcasts as friendship simulators Yep. And I yeah. got a lot of, just during COVID, it was me and Dave Smith, we'd alternate as co-hosts on each other's shows or get, one was the host, one was the guest. Mm -hmm. So many people were like, you helped us get through this. Right. So I think what we do, to, not to pat ourselves on the too much smoke on my own ass, but in all seriousness, we forget how many people like this is their friendship group. Dude, I used you to know, uh, listen to Rogan's show in 2017, religiously, him and Ari Shafir, him and Duncan Trussell. You were on the show. It's when I first saw your work. I would, it, those are my friends. I would work alone in my house on mines all day, yeah. and it was just Rogan. To think that we could do that, it, I agree with you. So people say that about Timcast IRL too. Like mm -hmm. I meet him on the street and they'll be like, it's like hanging out with my friends. Like I turn it on and it's like we're hanging out. And I'm like, it's kind of crazy because 
I am hanging out with my friends. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. this is literally what we're doing. Like, we, we got pizza sitting right here. Like, we ordered pizza. And- I've got pizza right here. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference is I can't say all the horribly offensive things in my mind. I gotta wait, wait we, until the cameras turn off. <laughs> we, 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 we do that for the members only on censorship. <laughs> yeah, even then, I gotta watch out because it's on TV. But but it is. On TV. Yeah. Okay, Boomer. I saw the 1990s. Co- COVID, uh, COVID saw the, the, a major boom in podcasting. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because of the lockdowns and people had friendship simulators. Yeah. Also had a major boom in suicides and That's overdoses. Scary, man. I, 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 first home. I think everybody, uh, you got to go for a walk. Yeah. And stop politicizing this. Like, I know you want to be like, oh, it's the Democrats' fault. It's And, and I'm not saying you. I mean, a lot of people online because uh, yeah. it's, it's like very technology. tribal. But it's just like, this is a, if someone is a Democrat and they're lonely, like, I, I have a lot of sympathy for them. Don't let your tribal. Well, it's, it's the other way around. Way. The reason why we're seeing the rise in wokeness and uh, part and, and a lot of why we see massive yep. support for Trump. Yep. People are seeking community. Yes, yes, so 100%. You're absolutely right. The, hi- the hyper polarization is that people want to fit in. So uh, without naming anybody, I'll, t- I'll tell you one of my secrets. And not just community, like the sense of being in an army. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you one of my secret techniques. You know what it is? Whenever, whenever, <laughs> never wash the beanie. Never wash it. <laughs> sweat from yesterday helps you tomorrow. No, sweat. I throw it in the garbage and put on a brand new one every day. I have a box with hundreds. Uh, whenever, whenever there's, without naming any celebrities, whenever there's a prominent personality who I'm told is like smack talking me, I immediately tweet at them. I'm a big fan and I love their work. Yes. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Boy, is that what you did? No, I, I was joking. Like you did oh. to me. But. Uh, <laughs> If I know who they are. So right. with, without dragging anybody, there's been a handful of So if of someone people. just searches through your tweets, they'll be able to figure out who you're talking about, right? Uh, I mean, there's probably like 775 to 1,000 okay. over the past several years. But uh, like, I, I think I mentioned this show, like the guy from Eve 6 was talking smack about me. And when I was a kid, we, I'm 15 years old. I learned like- five, is, that a, is that a band? Yeah, they're yeah. so good. I'm Inside Out. I'm sorry. I, Inside Out. Inside I was, Out. I was swallowing my pride. In the 90s. I would choke on the ride. You know to the black the world Wanna put my inside. tender heart in a blender watch it spin how round. did you miss that the only like, Eve I care about is in the Bible and nice. when I'm through <laughs> with this, you this, this guy's very lefty <laughs> okay and so he tweeted something about me and my only response was like someone told me the guy from Eve 6 was making fun of me and I was like what I got all excited and I tweeted I'm like I'm a big fan I can pl- I, I, me and my friends used to play your songs in the garage and then he deleted the, the smack talking tweet mm-hmm. yeah. and I was like I, I, I've invited him out several times but he doesn't want to come out there's a difference there, there are a handful of other people and they're just like passively smacked. They don't know who I am. They're similar all. to their tribe. It's yeah. my, um, my college roommates. Like I brought up Rogan. Goes, I hate that guy. I didn't even ask because I know he doesn't have a reason. Mm-hmm. Right. Just Rogan's out group. See, right. it's an online right. persona which you can caricaturize and hate or love. And then there's a the real person. It's not even the persona. It's just he knows that Tim's bad, and therefore he has to posture that I hate Tim. Yep. That's the persona. But that's it's not even the persona. It's just the the perception. But y- yeah, yeah, the persona is pretty shitty. Talking about it. <laughs> Crappy, excuse me. Oh, I mean, like when I tweeted that I thought it was funny when we we're getting punched in the face, and everyone got mad at me. But I think- except for like <laughs> it, the libertarians, I, a lot of libertarians. So like traditional conservatives, leftists were really, really mad, and like the more libertarian and post-liberal people were laughing and mad. Yeah. We love it. Right. Like, have a sense of humor, dude. Calm down. Uh, Austin, actually, yeah, Austin Peterson, like, got, he defended me saying, like, there is irony in these people yeah. voting for policies we warn them about and then suffering the consequences. Like, right. it's an ironic I, humor. We don't want it to happen. No. I want, I want people to start seeing each other as people first. Um, and then I thought that today and I was like, is that just lame to say? Like, is that like, uh, duh? Yeah, people say it all the time. But when people get hungry, they become insane animals. So you have to create societies don't, and segment. Don't you think that most people, I would say majority, not only lack empathy, but are proud of it? That they don't know they don't want the people's perspective. Absolutely. Because I don't want to think like them. I don't, what, what, what's a Democrat going to tell me that I don't know already? That I don't know the difference between a man and a woman? It's just like, it's like a shut up. Do you think up. empathy gets people into trouble? Is that why we, people have evolved to not? I don't. It. I can't. I, it's in this, just frustrating. No, in this day and age, empathy. I think it does to certain to your group of people. Because if you extend any type of grace to the supposed enemy, then now you're the enemy. And but it shouldn't be that. And way. I don't even think being able to understand their position is extending grace to them. Like, no, I want to understand what Bin Laden wanted in order to defeat him. Or if, right. I'm, if I'm the Confederacy, I want to know what the North wants. That's why we study wars. Yes, That's like, but yeah. when you put or it, history, they just their brains just. It's shut a down. difference between empathy and sympathy. You empathize with your enemy to understand them. Correct. I, sympathizing means I feel good. I feel for you. Yes, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm not emotionally attached to you with empathy. Maybe there's a form of emotional attachment, but, but yeah, it's more about emotional yes. understanding. Yes. I Good. guess I shouldn't be surprised if a lot of people have low IQ that they should have low EQ. I guess it follows, right? right? Yeah. But I, they shouldn't be so proud of it. 
Yeah, they they make they champion it. Yeah, it's you very are pushed odd. out for even saying you maybe listen to a certain artist, right? Right, because they have a perception of that artist. Let's let's shift back into the political realm here. We have this story. I, I wanted to do that segment because it's sort of attached to the the what we're talking about initially. But we'll get back into politics. We have this from the Post Millennial. Texas judge orders release of illegal immigrants accused of assaulting troops during violent storming of El Paso border. It is the ruling of the court. It is the ruling of the court. That all riding participation cases will be released on their own recognizance. Even non-citizens. These are non-citizens, right? And they'll never come back. They'll be released and they'll never show up for their hearings because... Why would they? They literally yeah. attacked our troops to break their way into this country. I want you to, to, to take this all in and then re remember, there are J6ers who are still in lockup who have not received trials yet. Oh my mm -hmm. God. Is that true? Yeah. This is one of the... This is, I, I'm sorry. This is the one of the things that drives me crazy about Trump. And all the MAGA people hand wave it away. These were his people. These were ride or die for him. Yeah. And he could have done a lot more for them than he did. Yep. Yeah, I think he certainly could have. But I'll, I'll throw a little defense in that. I don't think anyone understood exactly what was going on. Yeah, but I'm talking about now. To, I mean, it's been how, how long? Oh, sure, it, sure, yeah, sure. That's sure, what sure. I'm saying. I, 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 I thought you meant like up until no, the No, because then they would have put him in jail. And, and but not just that, but, I, you know, we talked about this before. It's like he didn't know what happened. He, he barely knew what happened on that mm -hmm. day. And people assume that what they knew, Trump knew. No, Trump was in the beast. He had security detail. He right. was the active president. I'm fine with that. Yes, I agree yeah. with you. Yep. But but certainly, he. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. What do you think he could do, to be honest? Uh, pay some legal bills. Talk more about them. Definitely. He's Look, you're doing more in many cases because you're sitting here being mm -hmm. like, I remember, uh, let me bring up Megan McCain again because there's a very, if, don't, don't ever, ever um, get inebriated and spend the weekend, wa weekend watching <laughs> Megan McCain The View compilations. No, I want to. It'll be a, it'll be a <laughs> terrible idea. But one of the points was there was some stupid segment and Whoopi Goldberg like, what do you think about like chocolates for Easter? And she goes, yeah, I don't know about chocolates for Easter, but uh, Alexei Navalny is in a gulag right now. He's being tortured mm. and people who are for the First Amendment don't care. Yeah. And this is absolutely outrageous that this is happening so that's what i think about easter chocolates and whoopi just pause and goes okay but she had a point right yeah so the fact that you're in, have your platform you're like guys this january 6th thing is still happening trump should be talking about this every five yeah. minutes he, he did he did uh i think he talks about it most rallies these days i i, I don't think it's he, anywhere near enough as he called them the other stuff. sure but the point is do something are you okay uh allergies oh okay itching my eye okay i I would yeah. love to see him. No, I'm signaling to you, Michael. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> defend Trump. Defend Trump. <laughs> he could be doing more. I really think Big he could time. be doing more. Big time. And the Republicans as a whole as well. But they don't care about these people. Agreed. Who, who Marjorie do? Taylor Greene certainly does. She, uh, correct. No, no, yeah, no. I'm, I'm talking about the, yeah. the Republican establishment. I know. Sorry. I, know, I, know. I, I just want to thank you. She the, doesn't count as a Republican. She counts as an actual fighter. I, I, I love that that crazy woman. I forget the gentleman, <laughs> the guy's name who does the walkaway movement. Um, Schrock. Schrock. Right. He was right. here. Right. Schrock. Schrock. Yeah. He was talking about how, you know, people don't even talk about a lot of the J6ers were forced into saying and signing papers saying that they were violent offenders. Right. When they weren't. Um, and there's proof that they weren't. And that's another thing that people could be talking about more, especially Trump. Be like, because people are like, uh, pardon them. Then they'll say we can't because they're violent. But then in, in reality, a lot of them sign things saying. I'm glad a lot of conservatives over the, the 2020 to now have a better understanding of the legal system mm -hmm. and how deranged it often is. Yeah. And how laws like Kyle Rittenhouse is a great way of call, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's happening on New York, D Daniel Perry, it's or, or the, uh, can we see the victim or the, or the perpetrator? You know, Perry's the guy, guy that guy killed who, out the homeless guy who was who trying was to kill people Penny. on the, oh, Penny. Daniel Perry. Daniel Penny. That's right, Penny. Yeah. Daniel Penny. That's Penny's what I meant. the guy in New York. Perry, yeah. Perry, Perry is the guy in Austin who had the far leftist. No, I meant the, the New York rifle. guy. I meant the yeah, New York guy. The point Perry is, is like the government prosecutes who it's as a threat to its power yes. and lets everyone else go. It's can, not objective law. Can we just skip all the patter and jump right to what really matters in the story? What's that? Hitler and World War Two. <laughs> yeah, let's mm -hmm. do World it. War so, okay, well, okay, so we have uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm half kidding. Uh, and I'm uh, with the, with the illegal immigrants storming the border, the. You know, Donald Trump has said he's going to he's going to engage in the largest deportation effort ever seen if if he wins. Since what? Say Obama? It. Say it. Since what? No, it goes back Say further it. than that. <laughs> Say it. To the 1940s. Say what? Say what? The 50s. Eisenhower. Do you know what it's called? The Japanese internment camps? No, Eisenhower. No. Who oh, did he what? deport? What? what? You don't know what it's called? No. I can't say it out loud. It's a slur. Really? Oh, okay. Then don't Put say it. Put up Eisenhower deportation. Look it up, Ian. Well, wow. so my, my point is this. We've talked about it before. They're going to claim when Donald Trump begins arresting people who stormed their way into the Yeah. <laughs> Bro, that's crazy. Can you spell it? No, uh, I'll talk about it. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'll look later. it up. This is amazing. What the okay. <laughs> My point was, we talked about this before. Everyone's Googling it all. Yes. Oh Donald, Tr Donald Trump is going to be compared to Hitler. 
They're going to show uh, soldiers rounding up illegal immigrants, federal agents. There, there's going to be liberals. They're going to be posting videos where they're hiding illegal immigrants in attics. They're going to make the attic the specific point about it. Yeah. Sure. And they're going to, I am, I'm, I'm wondering, refugee may be the word they choose to use because they're, they're going to try and associate what's happening with the invasion of this country and Trump's attempt to stop the invasion with the Holocaust. And they're going to show pictures and claim everything Trump is doing is what Hitler did. That's my concern about yeah. the, the deportation. So what do you think about Trump's call to make mass deportations? I don't think he has the capacity to do it. So you think he'd, he'd try and then ICE would just be like, we don't. Yeah, I don't, think he, I don't think he, abs I, I think this is one of those things. This is the new version of the wall. Like, right. I'm sorry. Like, listen, that didn't go well. I, I know that people I'm not saying Trump's not better than Biden. I'm not saying the Trump presidency w didn't have excellent moments. I'm not saying he's hilarious. I'm just saying that in terms and and I know there's reasons for this. But in terms of delivering on his promises, you had he was fighting two establishment parties uh, against him. So mm. for him to be able to pull this off is going to take a lot of work. And I don't I think the vast majority of Republicans who are at the uh, um, bond paid for by the Chamber of Commerce and corporations are not going to go for this in the slightest. I could see how him. do you go back to Maine as Susan Collins and sell this? Yeah, like, I could how, see, do you, and how do you pull off the operation? I, like, yeah, I could see them letting crazy. him do it get some really nice photo ops of him just tearing children away from their parents, make him look like Hitler, and then play shell games behind his back. Be like, oh yeah, we're doing it, and they, not doing anything about it. But they don't it. even need the photos to happen. They'll just take any photo and say exactly. it was Exactly. Elian Gonzalez, with, right. yeah. Right. The, the, if he tries the it, they'll make him Who look like Who built the cages, Joe? Obama. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. I tried telling a guy this, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Trump derangement story I told about MGM when the guy was yelling, these idiots, they support Trump. He mentions the... Uh, the kids in cages. I actually lived just, just slightly north of Homestead in Florida, mm. where those facilities were. And I was like, "That was under Obama." <laughs> he's like, "No, it wasn't. You're lying." I'm like, "Well, you know, not just wrong, lying." Right. Yeah. yeah. Here's the other thing. I'm gonna put this out there because I think conservatives understand you can't put anything past Joe Biden and his machine. But at the same time, we, we say, blah, 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 blah. "If Trump wins." Right. In 2024, he wins November, whatever, 5th. I don't know what the date is of election day this year. He's inaugurated January 20th. Biden has two months to have a blanket amnesty mm -hmm. with a Democratic Senate. And right. why wouldn't he? Yep. Look how much the Democrats got away with, like on Jan 6. Like, just like that was one day that they were then to use and politicize for so, all these years. So if I was Trump, I keep my mouth shut until I'm in the White House and then do the deportations. But if you're telling the Democratic establishment, if I become president, I'm going to do this, they're going to be like, we had to give them an amnesty. It's Trump's fault. Yep, that's right. my issue with his tactics. A general issue I've taken with his tactics is he speaks a lot too much in my opinion and i think a really good commander of the u.s military would have his mouth shut act when I, needed and i then want him to be a sniper think, not a bulldozer yes. i think they're going to offer up amnesty it's already been reported that advisors to, to biden have talked to politico or whatever and said amnesty is being considered for many of these these individuals and then what happens is 2025 donald trump announces he is undoing the amnesty and then the democrats come out he's stripping citizenship now yeah that's the Which is unconstitutional. Here's the other thing. When they have amnesty, like if all these people are in Texas, it's Texas gun laws that are fault that there was all these murders, right? That's mm -hmm. what the argument's going to be. Oh, you mean if they yep. give a bunch yeah. of illegal, yeah. violent criminals that came here illegally guns and then they start terrorizing them? Or just give them citizenship like, right to be yeah, here. We can't give people guns. Look, what, look what's happening. Yeah, that's how yeah, it's going to play out. We cannot soften amnesty. This is not, it's not just to, to declare amnesty on a bunch of criminal aliens. Not right now, it is not. Like people don't appreciate to what extent the regime is capable of, of 4D chess. They're oh, really know. pretty good at it. Yeah. Like they think because Biden's this like, again, corpse that the people <laughs> behind him, they're all stupid. And maybe they're all stupid in the sense of they don't have common sense. But in terms of affecting political change, they've been at it for a very long time. I've been saying, yeah. if you think there is no 2024 shadow campaign, I got to Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then the bridge collapsed. <laughs> yes, right. yes, unfortunately. But that's not my, that's not my problem. You bought it. Yeah. I got the money. <laughs> I'm worried. I'm worried that the news is so slow right now. You know, it's like there's not a lot of things happening. That it's like the ocean receding before the big wave comes. Oh yeah. Because the there's a lot of stuff happening, have either you, symbolic or actually happening behind the scenes. Have like you the seen these videos of the tidal tidal waves? Yeah, it's, it's, it's remarkable. It's crazy. Cell phone footage where they're all standing on the beach and they go, wow, look. And the, yeah. and the ocean's just receding rapidly and they're like, wow. And then when the waves are coming back, they're just standing there and all of a sudden they're going, ah, and they're getting washed away. I think away. that's us right now. Yeah. I think we're so deranged as a country because we've been stuck in campaign season since 2014. Since right. like it's like been like a decade of Trump nonstop. I'm also concerned that they're going to switch him out with Hillary. 
Oh, I think it's going to be Whitmer. No way. Hillary's, how, Whitmer can't tell Hillary no. I, I don't think Hillary's going to do it because she knows she's too toxic. Hillary knows Hillary knows she's too toxic. Yeah. Really, Hillary has that self-awareness. I, so. I Well, I think she knows that she won't be able to get in because her she perception- know. She's Gollum. In, well, she is. <laughs> she is. I, and Whitmer is too. Hey, hey, hey that's offensive. It's Smeagol. <laughs> yeah. Not, and Whitmer is too, but I think my, my idea is, I used to think it was Newsom. Because he was like no the golden way. child. He can wait. He, but he knows he can wait his role. I could see them. It's going to be Hillary and Newsom. I could see Whitmer because I can see her you making think it's gonna a sympathetic Clinton, character. Newsom 2024? Yes. That's the plan B. I'm, I would bet. My, if, if, if they have to pull Biden out, that's the plan B. And it's a I, smart move for them. There was a, there was a poll I, I, I did. I, 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 would, I would just say one more point. I've been saying this as much as possible because I hope that the more I say it, the less likely it is to become real. <laughs> like I just put it out there. You know what I mean? Well, you're manifesting it. I, I, yeah, or am I I'm manifesting it? So there was a poll that found something Woman like manifesting it. Thirty, I think thirty-eight percent of people, uh, only thirty-eight percent of people believe Biden will make it to the yeah. end of a second term, and the majority of people polled believe Kamala Harris will be president if Biden wins twenty twenty-four. Hmm. I don't, I don't know why I should believe that Biden could make it to the end of this year. I want to know. And how I wish people... him the best. I, I do. I want him health and comfort and happiness with his family, and he should go. Or Trump retire. Yeah, he's no Trump chicken. He's a heavy dude. I mean, I wish yeah. nothing but health for him. But I mean, he can at least it, make a somewhat of a sentence. Yeah, well, you know? no, but Trump, I'm saying Trump's spry. Yeah, yeah, but things happen all the time to people. You know, right at, at that age. Come on. I want to know how many people think Biden's alive right now. I'm one of those people. He's not alive right now. Like, I, I don't think this is. I There's really like a White House Biden. necromancer who's just sweating his ass off, well, straining, I, like I'm yeah. trying so hard. I think it's a network of people. It could be animatronics, <laughs> deepfakes, who, who crystals, be, green screens. Who, who would be most likely if they, if you had to guess who in politics is most likely to be a literal necromancer? <laughs> would it be like Mary Pelosi? Pelosi. <laughs> Pelosi. Pelosi. Yeah, it's yeah. Pelosi. Yeah. Her husband yeah, thing yeah. was like a ritual. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It probably has underground caverns. I love how Ian's like that's Pelosi. Like immediately, it's like Family Feud. Who's a necromancer? Oh, Pelosi. And I love Nancy. Don't get me wrong, but and she's been in for a long time. They go to the same crystal shop. No, no, no. Way, I got it. It could be Elaine Chow. I don't know her. Mitch McConnell's Ooh. wife. Because that's why he's freezing because the spell's not working every so often. <laughs> She's working behind the scenes. Yeah, like you see Chow. those videos of like the people kind of puppeteering behind uh politicians in like the in Congress. No. Where they're like whispering behind yeah, them. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. By the way, but that's because they have a script. to your point about <laughs> no, the, the, magic. the Russians with the brain frying thing, are we gonna yeah. talk about that? Please. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Because I what, I, what I, is I, wanna, I wanna talk about something else real quick. Okay, so um, in seven days, there's going- Seven days. In seven days. You play against seven days to die. The sun will go dark. That's awesome. Mm. A dark shadow will mm. sweep across and this nation. The blood starting, moon rises. Starting with Eagle Pass. Actually, the, the, the eclipse is going to fl go directly over Eagle Pass. So it'll be pure darkness. Where we are in West Virginia, we're going to get like 80 to 90% where you can see. It's really fun. I don't know if you've ever been in a partial eclipse where you can see little moons on the ground, like little crescents. Is that somewhere. right? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So okay. what happens is when the when the when the when the when the uh, moon blocks at the sun, partially, then there's a crescent shape of light beaming through, and when the folk when the focal points go through like the leaves of trees or whatever on the ground, you see a bunch of little moon shapes everywhere. It's crazy. Am I gonna be able to see it when I'm in Japan, or is it only North America? Only North America. You're oh, not gonna see it. it. Yeah. So uh, I'll get the next one. <laughs> but apparently CERN is firing up on the same day. That's right. Oh, and boy. NASA is launching three rockets into the solar eclipse next week. Quick. And so, uh, ev uh the, cons the conspiracy universe is on fire right now. Does it say the name of the rockets in this? Isn't it a pep after the <clears throat> Egyptian god K of chaos? I'm uh, pretty is sure. it really? I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me yet, but I'm pretty sure. Which is lined up with like the Lockheed Martin spy satellites know. where it's like the patches say the better the devil you know yeah. or nothing beyond our reach. But I'm pretty sure a pep, A-P-E-P, is one of the things that these rockets are named after. Not in this article. Oh, interesting. The last time the CERN was fired off, the Guidestones blew up and Shinzo Abe was assassinated. Wait, and was that like week. right before Trump became president? Uh, no, this is this Okay, is only so all three of ago. them are called okay. Apep Rockets. Apep Rockets, which is the Egyptian god for, I believe, chaos. No. Apep? Yes, it's really? the snake that eats the sun every day. Right. I think that's it. Apep, yes. Oh, yeah. Really? Yes. Also known as a, a, yeah. a, a Apophis. Totally yes. cool. It's totally cool. I mean, NASA only hired all the Nazis after World War oh, II, Project and they're totally Paperclip. cool. They're totally fine. I'm not sure they're not doing anything symbolic and evil up there. They um, definitely hired a lot of Nazis after World they War II. They so, definitely so, did. Uh, Project Paperclip. Yes. They're launching the three... Ro Wait, wait, hold on. Yes, this is intense. Break it down. Apep eats the sun. Yes, yeah, sun. And they're firing Every Apep day. rockets and at then, the eclipse. Yes, that's why the the, <laughs> Dude, the, the Egyptian <laughs> Book of the Dead is the official name is the Book of Coming okay. Forth by Day. And, and you know, know if I notice solar interference, right. you, 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 you know about Keck meme magic in 2016, yes. right? This is 
We live in a simulation. What were you, what did, yes. This is the final season. I hope you guys it's are ready for the, the final fi- season. It's not the final season. Yeah, I agree. How, how, many, how yeah. many more seasons are there? I don't know, but no. this isn't it. Yeah, final season is black pill stuff. I have optimism. Dude, for oh, no, 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 no. I, I'm not saying the final season is, is bad. We still have I'm to saying see, like, no, no, we still have to see Fetterman in the White House. And then we're going to have to like, look at- That's it. definitely going to happen. <laughs> no, I don't season know. I, zero, I feel like- I It's going to happen all over again. You're watching Earth. And this is the great climax of the final season. And then they might relaunch. They'll, they'll reboot Earth with like Earth rebooted. And it'll be starring Fetterman or something. I'm so, starring the, the Fetterman. Final, Earth, Earth 2, the it'll final reboot. It'll be Netflix and Temple's black. <laughs> it'll, it'll, <laughs> he wears all what, white. Played not, by Trudeau. Final season doesn't mean bad things happen. It okay. means this is when the hero wins. The story right. is resolved. And we live happily ever after. Okay. So like Donald Trump is going to be riding that Velociraptor with the machine right. gun. Like right. in those pictures. You know what I mean? Out like, of the gonna, eclipse. To it, stop the yeah. rockets. Okay, can I just pause real quick and say, this is actually really crazy that the rockets are called APEP and they're being fired at the sun. Yes. Right, yes. Is, is APEP an ap- acronym for something or are they named after the god? I'm sure they made up an acronym for they're it. They're atmospheric perturbation oh, okay, thank around thank eclipse path rockets. <laughs> they did that on purpose. Symbolic but it's not, evil. I, I, if I can put my, take my tinfoil hat off. No. It's, he's not really called APEP. It's really called like Apopsis. Like APEP right. is not really the name. Okay. But APEP is close enough for me. No, sure. no, 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 no. APEP a- a- or APEP. I think it's a few different no, no, versions no, no. of it. A- APEP's the name. No, there's three different names and the most common is like Apopsis. It's right. not APEP. It's Apophis. A- yeah. Apophis. That's Greek though. APEP. E- APEP is Egyptian. Apophis is Greek. Same, same, same deity. Same he's God. also not a big deal in Egyptian uh, mythology. Right, he battles. Well, I, have you seen that movie, God, Gods of Egypt or whatever it was called? No. With, uh, it's where... Like, uh, I can barely remember the movie. Set steals the power of Ra or whatever. No, 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 not Ra. Uh, yes, uh, that would be Ra, Horus, Osiris. No, Horus, I think. Horus is the hawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he has, the, like, they made a movie about this where, like, the hawk guy flies around and then he goes up to a chariot or something in space and, like, Ra is there and chasing a giant Apophis hmm. or something. Yes, oh, that's sounds, correct. That's yeah, what happens every day. Yeah. This, yeah, yeah Apophis yeah. eats the sun and then the sun, it becomes, it becomes nighttime and then every morning he yeah. gets defeated. This they is, made a movie. This so. is like, I do think that the sun causes disturbance feedback in CERN. So they're probably waiting for a moment to block out the sun. The moon has the magnetic yes. you know, torsion to it because of its makeup of iron. So it could, they could be using that as a shielding mechanism that they're putting rockets up to watch atmospheric disturbance while it's happening. And I wonder what time they're firing CERN up. Is it like, probably are they waiting for that exact moment? 3.33, I don't know. They have some weird time, I think, of, for all these things. But uh, they also found a ghost particle, they call it, in CERN recently. What's it called? Uh, I think they call it the ghost particle. <laughs> Just like they were looking for the Higgs boson, the yeah. God particle. They found it. I've got supposedly. Yeah, I got, I got bad news for you, Michael. What? So this is uh, a simulation, and we are just ancillary radio characters in the background when the main character is going on his adventure. Who's yeah. the main character? Uh, I've tr- Trump, probably. Do you just get to pick your guy it's when Trump. you start? I think we're all the main guy. Trump's the main guy, and like, you know, when you I, I mentioned this before, it's like when you play Fallout and you have post apocalyptic radio with three dog. And like we're three dog, we're just in the background talking about stuff, and the main character is out there somewhere listening. If, if this is a season, like you're saying, it would be Trump because the whole world shut down to destroy him. You need yeah. to, you opinion. need to meet the elves, my friend, and then you'll be singing, <laughs> singing a different yeah. song. I've been thinking about singing DMT and, and smoking DMT, but really about geometry and about the Kabbalah, uh, about this tree of life, about the pattern, the way the energy flows around the tree of life and the Kabbalah, and how if you can understand the language, and they're talking about how this is like ancient language god would make vibrational sounds and they would see shapes like cymatic shapes and then they'd write those shapes down and equate those shapes to the noise that they'd heard and that's their alphabet so like if you can memorize the sound meaning then when you go into the dmt realm and they show you all these these geometric shapes you know what it's saying oh okay wait michael have you met the elves i don't know what you're talking about um but ian that was kind of circuitous what you just said and at first i'm like okay this is ian going full ian and then you actually ended up in the correct in a very, <laughs> in a very smart place which you often do so i have to think about what you just said because that's really kind of interesting Did, thank <laughs> you for waiting till the last minute i'm like that shadow guy in final fantasy 6 if only when the mountain in the island is falling and you think everything's about to end if you wait till the very last second he jumps onto the ship with you and then he joins you for the rest of the game there's a six that proves it <laughs> yeah, that proves have it. you seen the elves have you it actually three <laughs> i'm not gonna talk about US. felonies on this show oh is I it mean, a felony uh, yes i mean they're spiraling nah. in well patterns, i heard you know, of a guy you know. one time on a podcast <laughs> uh i read vice uh, vice had an article about this a guy wrote about doing dmt and he said that he met a purple woman you can just google it and find mm-hmm. the article or whatever and then uh, i don't know the, the full story I can, I can barely remember it but he said like afterwards he was talking to his friend who also had done dmt and he asked his friend what it was like and he says he often talks to his purple woman and the dude started freaking out because he was like, 
the purple one I met said she knew one of my friends. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can go on about this at length, but one of the things just from a completely, I'm not saying this as, as a mean to you, non Ian perspective is all these people who consume this sub or, or inhale the substance are having similar experiences and they don't have a scientific explanation of why, because it's very specific. Yeah. What do you well, there's there extended state DMT is ongoing. What's there, that? Extended state DMT experience. Yeah. Where people are put in beds and they put on IV drip DMT to put them in this state. For hours, many, many. I don't know the extent of it. What if this is like, you know, have, have you seen uh, in Rick and Morty's playing Roy? Do you know, it's, it's, it's a fairly common scientific uh, uh, science fiction theme, but they go to, they basically go to space, Dave and Busters, and they play a game called Roy, where you put on this headset and then you live a full normal mundane oh. life. <laughs> and then he like, he lives to be 80 and then dies and then takes off the helmet. And he's like, I'm Roy, I'm Morty. And hey, you just bought, you sold guns to, mm -hmm. like he comes yeah, back yeah, yeah. to him. What if that's all it is? And when you, when you take DMT, you're basically forcing the headset off. And so like that is, yeah, yes. everyone's sitting around you and you're playing this video game and then all of a sudden your headset's coming off. Like, whoa, what are you doing? Yeah, what are you all, doing? All you see is like binary. You see electrical current. And you're like, this is making no sense. It's, but if you understand what the impulses actually are telling the machine to tell you, then you can like read the current. I think it dissolves a veil between this and whatever's else, whatever else is out there. I haven't done DMT, but I've spent many years doing a lot of other things. And uh, on some of those things... I was in other places, whether it was more pattern based places or places with kind of like machine elves, but I don't think I'd call them that from the descriptions I heard of machine elves. But I think you just are able to trespass into a place you're not usually allowed in. And if you're lucky, you come back. What say you, Michael? I, uh, well said. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, you I think you're already in there, yeah. but you don't maybe allowed like because it'll try and twist your brain away from it. You yeah. know, your brain's got this built-in like defense mechanism where it doesn't want to see it almost, where it's like you got to ignore that part of it for now to survive. Right. It's also well, like try if trying to explain a cube to a two-dimensional being. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Well, the stories I've heard are that there are demons who will offer you the deal. That's I've heard, I've heard that. that from some people that they've been approached by entities who will say, "I'll give you access to great knowledge," and there's there's there, there's it's it's a deal. Accept the deal. Yes. What do I get? You get all these great things. What do you want in exchange? Don't worry about it. That's the general idea that multiple people have told me that in, yeah. in different people who don't know each other who, who are. But but these are people who are Christian and have also done DMT. Dude, yes. So you think that or are you going to say something cool? I, I was going to say, <laughs> on the other yes. hand, there are people who think that once you break that veil, you can become kind of a so-called chiropractor of reality and kind of nudge things into the way that they're supposed to be. What does that mean? Like like Neo in the Matrix? Kind of. So you can like bend reality, like you can bring Berenstein Bears back. Well, or no, just kind of <laughs> like if things are wrong, like you're you have you're empowered to kind of you know shift them and, and have them in a more positive and aligned direction. What if it was always Berenstein Bears, but then the Large Hadron Collider shattered reality a little bit, and then it's like <laughs> turn the A into an E, and now we're all just supposed to accept it? I just had this actually happen over like yesterday. I was with my friend, uh, Michael uh, Wolf, who's a strength coach, uh, and he has a dog. And his dog looks- Love that guy, Mark. Yeah, uh, the dog's name's Chops, great dog. And I had remembered, and I, I still have no expression for this, that he had done a DNA test on the dog. And the dog is very big and has a Great Dane coloration. It's like black on the back with a white chest uh, and white feet. That it was part uh, some kind of retriever, part Rhodesian Ridgeback, even though there's no Ridge on the back, something else, and there's no Great Dane. And he goes, I've never had this dog DNA tested. I go- <gasps> I don't know any other dog that looks like a Great Dane. I don't have that many dog friends. I'm positive we had this conversation because it was so odd that this dog is not part Great Dane. He goes, I, I don't want to know what he is. I mean, he's clearly partly Great Dane. Like, what? Do you, and I, I'm like, am I in another reality? Like, I have no explanation. <laughs> do you think situation. sometimes false memories come from dreams? You don't think you Yeah. Remember? Or it could be some kind of sliding, like, like you know, like right. the, th the very thin. The I don't shifting know. From, something else you said. Sliding, yeah. Uh, I have no explanation for this. You just reminded me that Alistair Crowley also summoned a demon on April 8th. Crowley, sorry. I, like, Crowley sounds so much better. I know, but better. Crowley, like, holy. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I just, I just lost an auction for one of his signed books. Someone paid 11 grand for it. So, wow. oh my goodness. Do you know what I'm talking about, though? When he summoned the demon on April 8th, which is the same day they're doing what? all this stuff? What the? F no, I don't know this he, story. He claims to have talked to a demon for three days. Uh, I'll look it up. It's called divorce court. <laughs> what, if, what, if, what if the reality is... Um, uh, the higher power, be it whatever you'd like to call it, does play an active role in the universe, but we can't perceive it when it happens. I think that's true. And it, we all shift along with it. I think that's we, true. We are part pieces of the universe, right? Mm -hmm. 
We are all comprised of the matter of the universe. We eat it. It becomes us. We, 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 our bodies are, are of it. So if there is a shift to the whole universe, we are a component. We shift along with it. Yeah. But we're also changing the universe with our own shape. So like we're, if we're like part of the membrane of reality that's vibrating and causing the shapes as we know it, not only is the universe vibrating and causing us to change shape, we are influencing that vibration with our behavior and then causing the entire subsystem or macro, whatever you want to call it, super system to change. Yeah, the, Tim, the, can you admit, sorry, just ask me quickly. Can, admit? Uh, can you acknowledge, I'm not, this isn't a gotcha question. I don't have, it sounded like a gotcha question, but your life and what you're doing with this show in a way is indistinguishable if life was a simulation and you're like a video game. Like it's kind of mm -hmm. insane what this show is, right? Like presidential candidates come here, you just talk to them, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I that that I, this must be a simulation, I guess. But it's, but I, it's indistinguishable. It's just so crazy if you sit down and think about it. But but the reality is also this like, isn't that just life? You know what I mean? Well, sure, we, sure. We've talked about before, even before the show, and just life in general, you have these weird synchronicities you find yourself in. Like, you know, throughout my whole life, there's been just weird moments that I'm like, how is this happening? Meeting Kirvana gets widow or something like oh, this. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, Kirvana oh, yeah. means a lot to me, you know? I, one, one thing that I, I, I've told this story before, when I was, when I was like 15, I was watching a, a skate video and I was making fun of these skateboarders to my friends who were standing behind me. We were watching, we we're like, ah, these people are losers. And then like two months, two months later, I met them. Oh. And then I felt really bad. And I was like, they were really nice to me and they were cheering me on and they were giving me high fives. And all my friends were sitting there like, they knew that I was like this little, you know, just this little dick right. on the internet. Right. And then, but, but here's the thing. <laughs> I thought to myself, I was like, wow, that's really embarrassing. I feel bad because these are actually cool kids. Like these are cool people. We should skate together. And then when I was like 18, a similar thing happened where my friends were all hanging out. We watched a skate video and I'm like, this is the stupidest thing. I was like, that person's so goofy looking. And then like a year later, they showed up to a skate park I was at and they were like, hey, cool, nice to meet you. And I was like, these are the nicest people I've ever yeah. met. Funny. And then at that point, I'm like 19 and I was like, I will never disparage another stranger again. That, yeah. that, that, lasted, that lasted five minutes. Um, <laughs> I, 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 you know, In that way though, for no reason. <laughs> like just trying to be a snarky, cool kid right. who thought I was yeah. better and I was gonna insult people. I found nah, if I got a reason to insult not, you, I will. Ahead, if you can criticize people accurately and you still can maintain kindness, you're not hateful about it, they, they'll wanna be around you. Even if you think they're your like opponents, if you're accurate in your criticism, they hear you, they'll come to you. If it comes from a place of kindness, I was, people talk about having a case of the Mondays. Last uh, Monday, I was flying to New York and the worst way to wake up is when you're on a flight and you hear the person directly behind you on the plane scream, someone please help me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I look and he had his hands around the person next to him throat. Whoa. And I, I don't know if it's a function of, I've watched too many YouTube airplane freakouts. So I'm like, okay, cool, this is happening. And my first thought was, should I film it? Yes. And then I'm like, if I film it, should I yell out, world star? <laughs> yes. But there was no part of me that's like, the, I'm in trouble. Like I knew yeah. this isn't how I die. And right. it was really weird to have that knowledge. And it's a oh, spoiler alert, just to ruin the story. Uh, the guy's mom was having a seizure and she wasn't breathing and she's fine now. She worked, it worked oh, wow. out. I'd never seen someone have a seizure before. Mm. It's very disturbing because there was, it was like a, a mannequin. Like there yeah. was, her face was completely blank. Yeah. It was, I've never seen anything like it before since. This is an important uh, PSA to the general public. Uh, I went to, uh, I went to, uh, 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 I, what do you call it? There was like a, a fundraiser event and it was a politician who was raising money for uh, epilepsy uh, uh, awareness. Yeah. And he said movies have made people think that a seizure is a guy screaming and shaking yeah, violently. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, uh, often a seizure will be you're, you're in the middle of talking to someone and they just stop talking. And then everyone's like snapping their fingers like, hey, are you still there? And they're not mm -hmm. answering you. And then they just all of a sudden go right back into their sentence yeah. Yeah. and that and people will laugh and be like haha that was so silly not realizing this person could have just died yeah yeah so people need to understand that they too. rebooted uh and by the way is, i was like i was is the entity that crowley talked to on april 8th which how is do you spell that day. uh I, a i w a s s okay i was I, I think that's how you say wow. it but i said crowley wrong so who knows well it's got the, the, i don't know about all that but we do have some conspiracy theories for you that we should get into Ooh. now we have this from the daily mail Ex-National Security Advisor John Bolton, we trust him, warns Russia is very likely behind Havana Syndrome amid fears it's being used as energy weapon as he claims it isn't being taken seriously. As soon as John Bolton comes out and claims it's Russia, I immediately say it's probably not. But the, uh, the story is that 60 Minutes ran this, uh, uh, they ran a story where they said they had a whistleblower claiming that Russia has energy weapons. They park cars near U.S. intelligence agents' domiciles or um, places of work. 
and they the, the people report hearing things like a marble rolling down steel or a ringing. And then all of a sudden, over a period of time, they start becoming dizzy. They 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 their brain can't process stairs anymore. They become light sensitive and have to wear special glasses. One woman said she went to the doctor and got a brain scan, and the doctor said there are holes in your brain, like that have just developed like rather rapidly. So the question is, does do Russian spies have weapons to scramble the brains of this? Isn't humans? the first time I heard something like this because I know there are these compilations of people, and I know Judge Judy is one of them. Where like there's newscasters or like prominent personalities and they're talking and then they just blah, 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 and like their mouth doesn't work and it, it's if you look up these clips what judge, look up Judge Judy forgets how to talk and it's not a stroke and there's like a this happens there's like a lot of these videos that I've seen this Havana syndrome's been around since I think the 70s whenever they were this is where it comes from Havana Cuba. And they purportedly were experimenting sure? on American troops. I'm in, I've seen in this. A judge, this isn't a sliding this isn't door. One of those, yeah. No, but <laughs> but the title is not good. No, but Judge Judy uh, forgets how to speak. Shout out to Judge Judy. I I mean the Russians could be doing it, but this totally doesn't sound like anything we do to ourselves. Yeah, I think first answer to the question you <laughs> asked him: Do it. they have? Probably they do have the tech, and makes me think that we also have the tech. When when you come, when your government yes. warmongers come out and tell you that the enemy has a weapon, that probably means that you have the weapon yeah. and have been using it. It just so happens that the YouTube. people they want us to not like are doing something. Is this it? Judge bad. Judy makes noises we, and speaks we, gibberish. You know we're yes. doing it the whole time. I well, know. I know I'm, we are. I think I'm going to do this. Ding a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling. No, this, 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 this is just, <laughs> okay. okay. That is certainly not so it. <laughs> that is her just insulting people. So yeah, I've I've not heard this. But you think they're firing energy weapons at like people on TV to mix them up in the middle of their communication? Is that I don't know what it could is. It, could it be that Jim Carrey was given the powers of God and is just getting revenge on his enemies? Or, I heard so he put on this mask on his hand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on his hand, yeah. And then it took over his the body, and you can only best, imagine where it went from there. The I think it was called the hand. Yeah, yeah, the best part hand about that jump. is, Michael, is that when we clip this segment out of the main show, people have no idea what you <laughs> are talking like, What a sick no, mind he has. The best thing so is gross. that 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 mask just went on auction last week. Oh, the real mask? Yes. Really? And during that auction, I won... Uh, one of the lament configurations from one of the Hellraiser movies Whoa. and Lord Fornicus's orb from Cabin in the Woods. Whoa. And they're both going into my bedroom where they belong. But oh, the mask cool. you I didn't, just, was just out of your... I just started listening. I, didn't, I, I, didn't want I, the mask. I, I can't find this thing you're referring I'll, I'll to. I'll look for it. I'll look for it. I just started listening to the Hellraiser book. So there's like, but there's like video compilations yeah. of news anchors who just break down and can't talk? Yes. That sounds like Bruce Almighty. It sounds like Mitch McConnell. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people are just having strokes. But they've been, they've been developing weapons like this for, for decades. You said 70s. Oh, she's calling, it a, she's calling it a mini stroke. Mini stroke? Judge she's Judy calling it a mini stroke. And then there's a CNN one. CNN host suffers a stroke on oh, air. Wow. I, get, I can see a lot of someone's will be dehydrated up there. I don't. Ian, how many times have you done this show? Have you ever been dehydrated that you don't know how to talk? I'm not. A, we all want that, Ian. Insert derogatory <laughs> term. I'm not one of them. No, no, I'm I'm a health based first. But if, night after night after night, you're getting. She's Judy is probably in her 50s or 60s. She's she not wasn't. doing it live. You think they? Can, she does it yeah. for like an hour a okay. day. Okay, but uh, no. maybe with the hot lights too. There's this someone might have been no, halogen Ian, lighting. There's too. someone in the crowd with a machine making her stop talking. Yeah, clear, the, I can't clearly. find the video of this. I can see the story. Well, if you go to YouTube and look, I found it. There's like a million of them. So they didn't scrub it. After the news came out of the uh, the brain holes machine, Rob, hold on. Let oh wow, this Havana syndrome thing's been around recently, beginning in 2017. More people. Have I'll, been I'll find. Hold on, I'll find a compilation. Yeah. Uh, news. First the story. one lady said that her her like cell phone battery was about to explode from her really? being attacked. Yeah, I can only I can only find videos of her talking about having had a mini stroke, but I can't find any videos of it. So this is like the Havana syndrome medical condition reported by U.S. and Canadian government officials and military personnel, primarily in overseas locations. Reported symptoms range from ringing in the ears, cognitive dysfunction, and pain. And they were first reported in 2016. It I, sounds like high-tech attack think weaponry. Totally possible that we all have uh, this technology. Yeah, right? and it was tested overseas on purpose because they didn't want to do it in Baltimore. Of course, and then we also take into account that CBS is reporting on this. And I was thinking about Tim and talking about thinking about Gelman's amnesia. And this is a great example of it. Like CBS 60 minutes, just a little bit ago, got uh, in trouble for the deceptively editing the moms for Liberty interview. So if you're going to know that they're bad with that. Why would anyone trust this? Cause it seems like why? they're just getting Intel so, from an officer. So uh, a boat crashes into one of two support columns, taking out the uh, lar one of the largest ports in the country and disabling East Coast hazmat mm -hmm. or crippling East Coast hazmat transportation. Yeah. And within hours they go, 
Uh, we didn't investigate, but it's an accident. There's no sign of terror. Nothing to see here. They didn't literally say we didn't investigate. They were just like, come on, you can't investigate in five hours. Right. And But they came out and said, no sign of terrorism. It's just an accident. And I'm like, okay, I, I can believe that. That's fine. That's fine. That this ship at the right moment lost power, at the right time kicked it on, at the right time fully, fully revved its engines, forcing it to steer right into that pillar. And a lot of people think it's an accident. Fine. But then within a couple of days, they come out like, and also Russia has magic weapon. Have, have, mm -hmm. I shouldn't say magic, but Russia has energy weapons that can fry holes in your brains. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, should, we should go to war with them. Also, we're going to say it on April 1st. So it might maybe it's right. a joke. Yeah. Also, it might John get lost. Well, in it was the day before. I can't believe they okay. scrubbed this. Like, there's all these articles about it, but you can't find the video of Judge Judy. Is this Judy. another Mandela effect? No, victim? but there's articles about Judge Judy suffered okay. mini stroke live okay. on air, but whatever, it doesn't matter. But not live. Not live. live. It was live. Oh, but she said she taped her shows. But it's live on tape. Do you know what I mean? The air date. I get you now. The 60 minute special about live the Havana syndrome, tape. it all just seems like straight up propaganda Dude, to me. They there's, probably there's, got lasers from orbit, not lasers, radio microwaves. They give us like footage of a 15 mile police chase with a supposed Russian spy who they supposedly give us his name and then they say he went back to russia and then now they have yeah, how would this a, energy a weapon work like if I, I can't have any precision if you're like inside a building and i'm pointing something it at depends you. on the frequency and what the walls well, are made of maybe it's like those uh acoustic satellite things or not satellites but those things on top of trucks to get rid of to disperse crowds oh yeah and they direct Active a, denial systems I forget what it's called but it does like a, a, a high pitch or something to get rid of the whole crowd but that doesn't target one person it targets like a group of people my, right my yeah. point is like if i want to take out ian and not me and you and tim and I'm outside in some van. That's you'd, have really to put, if, you'd have to triangulate right? in beams into one location and pinpoint it on their brain or yeah. something like that. But it's I, called talking plasma. They have that technology too where they can make you hear things. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Teleport sound. And so, But if, I think if we know that they can do the crowd dispersal thing, I typically tend to think that these evil people have Holds access it, to yeah, but technology I, further. I, I, I agree with that. Right. It's in, in, broadly speaking, right. but holes in the brain sounds like a lot of work to do yeah. remotely. Well, the first thing I As thought was, the they have a heart if, it was gun in if it the was 70s. doing like a magnetic um, frequency in the brain and creating a pattern, it was like, it like pushed open, like magnetically pushed the brain open in areas and created divots kind of could, right. could have done that. Like bent the, bent the mind, bent right. the brain. I wonder what holes in the brain even if that's like when I'm watching that and I'm seeing that lady talk about it, I'm like, that could be propaganda, <laughs> right? Like, gee, sure, might not sure. have even been told. Like uh, babies in incubators. That's the, Iraq. In the 60 propaganda. Minutes program, they're like, we talked to one uh, person who we can't tell you his name nor the agency he works for. And it's all just like everything seems like a narrative they created to scare narrative. people. But it's Russia, we want you to be scared of Russia because we're going to war with Russia soon and we need to muster up public support. Yes. This on 60 Minutes. No Putin can put Russia. holes in your brain. Did you see on Drudge they're talking about Putin's thing about using nukes? Nope. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to be fair, Putin is saying he wants these news. I know, but my po <laughs> my point is like, is that is that an argument to extend this war? No, he's oh, saying right, he has exactly. to. If you're the world leader and you have nuclear arms, you got to say nuclear arms are on the table. By the way. Yeah, and you can't hug your family with nuclear arms. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. You're right. <sighs> Unless they have lead chests. <laughs> I, I will kill you myself. <laughs> <laughs> like Michael Malice. Uh, to lead be fair, packs, I stole that him. joke from from Family Guy. Uh, I have no yeah, original and, humor. And then Adam Carolla as death kills her. Yes, he does. Mm. Adam Carolla that joke. as death. <laughs> <laughs> he Death was on a date hand. and the girl goes, you can't hug the world with nuclear arms. And he he's goes, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and he just leans over and touches her and she dies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. That, that was his deal with Pete or whatever. He's struggling to pick up this chick at the cafe. But then she says a whole bunch of things about eating meat. And he's like, what are you talking about? Animals kill each other all the time. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, animals don't have war. That's why, you know, like we're, we shouldn't eat them. And he's like, what do you mean? They kill each other all the time. And she's like, and nuclear arms, you can't hug your family with nuclear arms. And then he just touches her hand and then she, goes, <laughs> she just dies. Well, yeah, the animal great, kingdom. <laughs> great segue to World War Three. The Animal Kingdom bypasses yeah, so war. Well, just, I mean, World, World War Three genocide on itself. We've World been in War it. Yeah, there, there, there are. Uh, uh, there's been articles for a year now that we're in World War Three. We've been in since 9/11. There's been articles for a year getting people used to the idea. We just got to. We got to admit yes. that we're the aggressors. That's what we got to look at. If we're going to talk about World War Three, the United States aggressed it and started it in 20 in, in 2001 when they went into Afghanistan. That was insane. Well, world, we got to we, World War Three. Yeah, this may come as a surprise to you, but the world existed before you were born. Yeah, but I mean, we could go back, oh. but like the end, maybe the World War II never ended. They just created, had a Cold War for a while, and then they now they're they're back. Like in we were in Iraq. I before. think we should nuke Germany. I agree with you. <laughs> we were uh, end World War Two. We were we were in uh, Iraq. Desert yep. Storm. 
you know, uh, you've yeah, got. We weren't mobilized for military, like global war, until 2001. That was That's when everything not mobilized. That's true, dude. The you have world you, mobilized you, behind you the US. You could have had a world war before 2001, stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like, Ian, I, th I think because you lived 9 11, you have 9 11 PTSD. 9 11 gave the US carte blanche to declare war on the world, basically. And mm. anyone that wasn't we with us that. was against we us. Had we had that already, though. We had that. We had that. Because, like, you think about not Eisenhower with really. the military industrial complex, he saw things happening already. And when, was, coalescing and that and power. when was the last declaration of war? <laughs> world, war like Spain? world war ii world war ii must be world war yeah, ii so what do you, what yeah. you, you always bring this up it's like oh 9 11 did i'm like dude we were they were doing these things well before 9 11 was just another vietnam. major component of it with yeah the vietnam was North pretty Korea. horrific there was yeah. nothing yeah, yeah the gulf, yeah. Of, the gulf like of tonkin it, incident you want to talk about declaring war the gulf of tonkin incident was a false flag the u.s ju used to justify entering the vietnam war done by jim morrison so father. it could be like sure. what do yes. we call world war one two and three is all just one protracted hundred years war that started in 1916 but the reality is Sort of 1913 we, we, with the Federal Reserve Act. We draw these distinctions because the world is always in a state of conflict. It's just to varying degrees. And the last hundred years has been global. And then after this next great war, whatever it actually becomes, when it goes full, fully hot and international, there will be uh, an effort to create a new world order, as George H.W. Bush said in the, in the late 80s, early 90s. And they will try to use the conflict to justify a singular global authority for law enforcement. And yeah. they got the information, whether intentionally or otherwise, during COVID, how much Americans would put up with. Right. Um, and the answer is a lot. Yes. Uh, totally right. The global citizens as well. But yeah, yeah. Americans particularly. But we're the concern. that's the, the bastion of freedom. Yeah. yeah. We turned our neighbors in quickly in this country. Who did? I, I sure did. I New York. The, were, the general win. No, no, I did because yeah. they were fat and they were old. <laughs> Get them out of here. <laughs> You're making me look bad, Smells. fatty. <laughs> <laughs> they were trying. Remember that bill in New York they were trying to pass where like we can come to your house and take you out if you're a threat to the health of your community. Is that a thing? They didn't pass it, but they've been trying to pass it for years and then it came back during COVID. What if Trump wins? He begins the mass deportation efforts. Democrats, along with their international cohorts, begin producing a mass propaganda campaign of people being loaded onto trains and buses and put in cages. And they say that Trump is enacting a second Holocaust, justifying an international response, which spirals into a World War III, yeah, UN which results in the U.S. having some kind of international force against it where it loses. Let's get even, before we even get to that, I don't think anyone watching this has a doubt that if Donald Trump tries to do this, Kathy Hochul, New York State's governor, Gavin Newsom, governor of California, would not mobilize their National Guard, whatever it is, to defy the federal government. I think that's a given. Can we not agree on that? They would. Not it's, they would. It's, it's their they state. Would mobilize. They would. It's yeah. their state's right to do the it. The inverse yes. of what Abbott did. Yes, they would the absolutely right. do it. Yes. They go, you are not coming here. We are protecting these people from your evil Donald Trump yep. Nazism. Yeah. And no then question. They, would, they would muster up support from foreign countries. The U.S. will be gutted and destroyed. The, everything Donald Trump will, d has done will be propagandized as the second Hitler. Yes. And then they will use that as justification for a new world order. The liberal economic order created after World War II to stabilize the planet was not strong enough. And this will be the creation of, it won't be overnight that there is a one world government. It will be that the UN gets law enforcement and policing powers within the jurisdictions of other countries at their own discretion. You see here's, the here's the other point I had to make is people don't appreciate that if the Republicans don't have like huge majorities in both houses, it, it, Mitch McConnell or the Mitch McConnell successor doesn't care about President Trump. So if yeah. there's another impeachment, Mitch McConnell, if there was a third impeachment and Mitch McConnell was the majority leader, Trump would be removed. Yeah. Because he'd be like, we don't need this guy. I would get the 60, 60 vote, 67 votes in two seconds. Yeah. True. The, there's uh, 17 Republicans for sure who would vote for another impeachment if the party sat them down. We've definitely got to maintain control of... Uh of the world we need like of our country basically because if like if the united states loses control they'll, they'll the global bankers the bet this new world order will be like see nations couldn't couldn't handle themselves and it caused too much global war there we would need be a this. world court not like the recurrent one but like a really one with muscle behind it a world army that it would be absolute madness in, in australia i've heard recently they're they're now removing atms they're going cashless they're attempting to go cashless by 2030 australia? in australia yep. I've heard and that, bank, yeah. is it because of the environment is that what they're saying i don't yeah. know yet but no, i think no, no, the no, hole no. in the ocean i wonder no no no, 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 no. Guys, 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 they're saying it's demand they're saying people don't use banks to pull cash anymore oh my god everything's digital so without demand there's no reason the next step is the handshake is crazy what's that remember when alex jones was crazy for talking about this uh shout out to amy dangerfield who just did an expose on it yesterday one part one of three uh check out amy dangerfield 
Dangerfield on YouTube. It's terrifying. This and is then, on the Australian. Yeah, thing? in Australia, cool. and then they're denying it. News has been like, oh no, no, that was a, a the screenshot was it fake? That's right. not really happening. Everybody that's freaking out. But what? So what hmm. they want now? Then the mark of the beast, I think, is the actual microchip uh, to buy and sell stuff without cash. That's obvious. And if the power goes out, I don't what, think it'll be a microchip. What do you think it's going to be? Your phone. Yeah, you but you why can, would you need the microchip? Mm. Enough people would be like averse to the idea. People that, are yeah. people. People are addicted to their phones. They get. It's look, a tracking look, device. Look, look, look at Hassan and that whole thing that happened with him, where his viewership declined, and then he went on this like depressive tirade. What's about, Hassan? Who? Hassan Piker. Oh, okay. He's the, he's the most prominent leftist streamer. His viewership drops, and he's posting, he's posting horrible things, and like, oh, I I can't believe this, and he was threatening self harm and things like really? that. Really? Wow. How long till yeah. he Dylan Mulvaney's himself? But oh. but so the, Hassan, the okay, I got so, you, bro. So the issue is people are addicted to the likes they get. The machine was built addictive on purpose. The, uh, 10 years ago, Twitter had been talking about getting rid of the retweet counter and the like counter. Yes. Mm -hmm. They knew that it was creating this addiction and they keep it. Why? It's a control mechanism to keep people addicted. They have to get the social validation. People will march in lockstep with the government when the government says jump because they want to make sure they get those clicks. So Elon buying Twitter is great turning into X. But if the, if the lockdowns happened and we already saw this, half measure with with Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, you could not ask questions. You could not, you could say very little without being removed because mm -hmm. they wanted to make sure they control the opinion. And there were people who knew exactly what was going on, but were concerned if I say the wrong thing, they will delete my channel. So uh, shout out to the anti SJWs of the 2010s yes. who for some reason vanished off the face of the earth or started claiming that they were leftists. Why? They got scared they would lose their like machine and they didn't want to get banned. And they weren't they're, crazy to get scared. No, but they're cowards. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But not they were they were right to be scared. Yeah. And it's 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 unfortunate. Yeah, it's the way you deal with fear is what makes you you get to Shout decide out. are you are you a coward or are you gonna go face the fear? Shout out to Chris Reagan for deleting his video Punch a Nazi. Do you ever mm. see this one? Oh, he deleted it? He, it's removed. I think he turned it private, so you can only find it by watching people who looking at videos of people who re-uploaded it. How long did it take him for him to uh, delete? I think it? it was only up for a couple for a year or two or something. I'm not entirely sure. But for those that don't know, this is a video where it's a it's a it's like an it's like a Weird Al style version parody where he took the song Paparazzi by Lady Gaga and wrote a song called Punch a Nazi. And the joke of the song is that it's about a guy who everyone everywhere is a Nazi, no matter what they're doing. And it's it's a it's a, it's a hilarious takedown of this 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 mass formation psychosis, and then I guess some leftists were like, "You're helping Nazis," so he took it down. It's it's oh, remarkable. I thought it was the other way around. Yeah. God. Oh God. No, he got he, apparently many people have said he got scared and so he took it down. And he's staying away from politics and and culture and stuff. Is and that focusing. the guy from Comptown? No. Who's cool it? name though. Oh. Oh, I don't know. Great, I'll look it up. Show. Is it spelled the way I think it is? It's his Chris something. I thought. Okay. No. No, there, there were, there were. Oh, this is the guy with the girlfriend who was red pilled, right? Oh, uh, he was dating Lacey Green. Yeah, that's and the one. And she was yeah. a Nick feminist. Mullen, Stavros, Nick there, Mullen. Okay, there were, there were a bunch of. Sorry, uh, I got confused. In, in the twenty tens, there were a bunch of like anti SJW. Yeah, 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 yeah. And many of them are now anti Trump. They stay out of politics. They're terrified. Some of them have denounced other people. They're absolutely terrified well, I, to be involved. I understand the fear of talking about politics. I get it. I feel that fear every day when I come on this show and try and be honest or choose honesty in this realm. But you have to face it. If you don't, they're going to do it for you and they're not going to do, do it. Do you know what Ayn Rand like. said? I'm not brave enough to be a coward. But, mm. you know, here's my question. Like, what is what are people scared of? And and you can comment and you can chat and tell me genuinely. I can understand the obvious. I have kids. I can't lose my job. Plainly obvious. Like, genuine. Like, what, what are people afraid of? You know of? what it is? It's imagine being in the 60s and, and coming out to your parents. Right now, imagine you, you're, your parents are blue pilled and, and they have a view of Trump. And you're like, you know what? I don't think Trump's so bad. For them, you're basically a crazy person as their son. Yeah, that's not a minor consideration. It's, it's like the. But what, what's the what's the what's the fear though? But the fear that they're going to be kicked out of the house, that yeah. they're going to be regarded as an outgroup by their loved ones. For a lot of people, their family is their me mechanism of support. Like I wouldn't want like if my sister was like vaccinating her, uh, uh, giving the kids boosters every five minutes, and I you know I was skeptical about that. I want to see my nephews. That's mm -hmm. not a that's a huge deal. Yeah. Yeah. I think what Michael's saying is like the soft launch of the social credit system. Yeah. You know, like, yes. and then the government wants to adopt that and then, you know, own it and then destroy everyone's lives, which is why what's in Australia is, is, is terrifying. I think people are afraid of losing the money in the family like I, that. I, I think that there is a decent probability that the future, the timeline we are on is Trump wins, 
They accuse him of being Hitler. International outcry, civil conflict in the United States, resulting in the destruction of the Constitutional Republic. The narrative that Trump was a, a Hitler 2.0. They start destroying our like our version of events, the truth, basically. They start pushing propagandistic worldviews. They start releasing information that's that's just falsified to justify why Trump is bad. And then in 50 years, there's a one world legal authority. And this country has no borders. They're newcomers. They're citizens and undocumented citizens. I, I think there's a strong possibility you, that's the timeline. Do you I, think, I don't agree. Do you think? You I think it's a possibility, but I, I, I have. I'm not saying it's absolute. I'm okay, saying no. no that, I, I got you. I am far more hopeful about the future of this country. What do you see? No, but I'm talking about the world. Like what? No, I, I understand what I, I, I think if they had their druthers, this would happen tomorrow. Like, there's no question about that. But what, like, what does the world do in response to a Trump? like a, a, a Trump 100% administration. He goes and he does exactly what he said he's going to do and he does it all. He fires, he schedule Fs, he cuts off the foreign wars, he brings the troops back. But How there's does the so many ifs there that, I, I mean, I if Trump was what they were saying Trump was, we, would be in, we wouldn't be where we are in 2024. Where would it be? I, I don't know, but it certainly, it would be a completed unrecognizable country from where we ended up. I being. also think when you ask the world what they're going to do, I think the whole world's on fire in their own ways. We were just talking about Belgium before. Oh, yeah. like, like It's like they're almost too distracted. I mean, they could do the whole like anti-Jordan Peterson thing and not worry about their bed and then go worry about the rest of the world, which is a lot of people on the left might do. And a lot of the people in the politics right now in general, but I, I don't know if the playing the Hitler card is going to work as well as it did last time. And now we're seeing like Michael Rapoport come around. Like, I don't know. Do you think that's going to be a, yeah, as effective? Yeah, I, think it would work. I think it would be. If you're actually rounding up people on mass, right. which none of us have seen in our lifetime, they can say with a straight face, this is unprecedented. Where is it going to stop? Next, it's going to be gay people, they're going to say. Right. Yep. And then everyone's going to be like, okay, this this isn't just him on Twitter. This is something really happening. And it, it's very easy to make this be like, country look, panic. we told you so. Yeah. Newcomers yeah. has actually become adopted by them. More yeah. and more <laughs> Democrats are calling uh, illegal immigrants newcomers. Are they? Wow. No, they are they, yes, that's, absolutely. That's so smart of them. Yeah, that's yeah. really they're people underestimate how smart the Democrats are at branding. Yeah, but well, is it language lies. play? Yes, the, that's the why they keep killed saying language? criminal alien. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said stop saying illegal immigrant. Push back. They're criminal aliens. Do newcomers have a, a color on that flag yet? Ah, <laughs> mm, we should. It'd be we white. should promote that. For yeah. purity. No, they, they just <laughs> no, no. They they take the little triangle and put a sombrero on it. You know what? <laughs> yes. When I, whenever I listen to you guys, you guys, anybody really talk about a potential future, I, my brain goes through contingencies. Well, okay, check. That's okay. Next step. Nah. So I'm listening to you, Tim, talk about Trump gets elected. Okay, green light. Next step. He starts rounding up. Eh, immediate red light. That will not work. If he starts rounding people up, game over. That, it's, what, that, what does that mean, game over? Uh, the entire country will dissolve into civil war. But it, how, and yes, then the corporate, uh, foreign, foreign corporations will take over. So we can't let that. that, that we got to somehow change his, but, but, his but, tactics. But, but it won't be overnight. Trump will, he'll begin the process, he'll announce the deportation of criminal aliens. Uh, you will then start to see Customs and Border Protection get heavy handed. There will be either a uh, manufactured or accidental mass death incident at the border. This is one thing that I fear, considering you just had they released the migrants who literally attacked National Guard who are armed yeah. and the Republicans are seeking authorization for the use of lethal force on the border. And we know the cartels doing the human smuggling are armed as well. We are dangerously close to an armed conflict at the border. Democrats will frame it as Trump ordering innocent refugees and asylum seekers to be killed or something like that. As you mentioned, California, New York, probably Illinois and, and Michigan probably will say this is insane. We refuse. We will not participate. And then Trump's going to say something like the federal government has supremacy and we will go in and be, be deporting these criminal and, and aliens. Here's the thing. California, Arizona and New Mexico all have Democrat governors. Right. The governor of New Mexico is a complete loon who is the one who tried to unilaterally just ban guns. Yeah. So with not a big fan of the Constitution, even though I think it was Jenk Weger was like, this is crazy. <laughs> so right. he was on my show. I asked him that question. So if you have that border over there with these uh, um, hardcore lefties, Gavin Newsom certainly is. Uh, I can't, I don't, I don't know about Katie Hobbs, how hardcore she is. Mm -hmm. But point being, that is a huge huge chunk of our border that's under control of people who are taking their orders from higher and you ups. know what else is over Hires there up, excuse me. china and i'm just saying that because what would happen is you'd have foreign involvement if there was some sort of disturbance Easily. in the american way of life and george soros money mm -hmm. yeah china china would enter the the, the conflict by offering material support of course you should be allowed to have our illegal refugees in your state california let us help you trudeau in canada who knows what he's going to do he has limited support and but it's I, important I, I just read today i think it was alex jones tweeted it that the 
the northern border is wide open and the Chinese are running military drills with yes. the Canadians. Yep. Is that true? Yes. So I don't know. I read it yep. out. I mean, and so, and this was a couple of years ago. The story broke that there were uh, the Chinese military was running was running drills in Canada. So, what Canada probably offers the Chinese is a a a, a staging position. So, whatever support you're going to be offering to the United States can be can be brought in north, of, you know, near Vancouver it, or something. It could very well be that we are being squeezed like a bet, like a big bet. They're going to squeeze us into economic cowardice, subversion, where we have to bow down and say yes, thank you, please, so I can get my bank account. Uh, and then forced military where they're like, yo, we have troops on your northern border now bow, which is why everyone should be in Bitcoin. I mean, you look at COVID and you look how uh, most countries behaved and the U.S. was the most defiant. They yeah. were, they we, were, and we, still, we were still we weren't very defiant. Right. Even though we were the most, we still had a long way to go. But it's travel. because it's a big country and you got, you know, red states that were passively and then actively defined. And you yeah. had blue states that were totally on board. Yeah, if Donald Trump begins his mass deportation operation, then blue states will immediately like it, that's 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 the snowball falling off the cliff. But even before you even get to that, I, I think I think Thomas Sowell always talks about there's no answers, there's no, there's no solutions to political problems, there's only trade offs. Mm -hmm. Again, any people have this idea that if you criticize Trump in any way, you have TDS, right? And if you have any praise for Trump, you're a Trump supporter. Right. One of the big trade offs, if when if Trump gets reelected as president. I don't think people appreciate to what extent these blue state governors are going to go off the rails in terms of legislation because they'll have every incentive to be like, I'm the one standing up to Trump the most and who knows what they're going to push. Yeah. And so, you know, my fear, I talked about this a couple weeks ago, is that we get to the point with like the migrants storming the border where people on the right say to themselves, there is no government anymore. Yes. There, there is no law enforcement protecting us. CBP is now known to be trafficking children into sex slavery insanity and at a certain point they just say we've got to protect our own community because no one else Dude, will i'm starting to think they're going to let trump win and they're going to let him govern and let him enrage the population yes they're going to let him make a villain of himself they're not going to kill him. cnn would trump. love it they're going oh, to make the it. villain of him they're going to try yeah they're going to they're going to encourage it along oh yeah yeah right. look at these out of context photos and how many and look republicans at this 50 times and how many republicans would stick their necks out for him very few no not when it comes right. to deportation i don't yep. think so no, look at george floyd after, after the yeah, George yeah, Floyd incident, every conservative. And you know what was most shocking to me is I can forgive people think looking at the George Floyd thing and then everyone being like, you know, initially when the George Floyd thing happened, every conservative was like, this is horrible. No, we condemn this. The left screaming cops are racist and the right backed off. Hmm. Support for BLM peaked around like 53% of the population right after that. The riots happened and it dropped dramatically. The most shocking thing to me was to this day, you will still find conservatives who say things like, look at the Ahmed Arbery case that proves we're not racist. There are conservatives that celebrate the imprisonment of the, th the McMichaels and that guy was, I think his name was Brian, I'm not sure, going to prison for the Ahmed Arbery case as if that, that proves conservatives aren't racist. And for those that don't know, the Ahmed Arbery case is a travesty of justice. It was an unfortunate incident. Ahmed Arbery, it is sad that he died. But the narrative that three white guys decided to lynch a black man who was jogging is the most psychotic fabrication ever fabricated. Wait, hold on. By that logic, Jesse Smollett never happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesse Smollett. Are you, are you going to tell me that's a conspiracy theory too, Tim Pool? <laughs> Certainly. But imagine if Republicans were demanding justice for Jesse. Yeah, right. Yeah. This is what yeah. Ahmed Arbery is. Mm -hmm. A guy who is on, who, who is a suspect in a burglary where there's video evidence. The police said this is our suspect. Two guys saw the suspect who, uh, who, who had been told to them by police and shown a picture. Now, cops told them not to go after him and they shouldn't have, but they did. And then the guy, the third guy who just filmed it went to prison too. And there are conservatives who are like, see, you know, we had someone on the show like four or five months ago who was like, well, look, we got Ahmed Arbery, right? See, like we, 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 we believe in justice. And I was like, what? We didn't get that one right. Those guys should not be in prison. There was a there was a Republican who was justice for Jussie, and I'm not joking, and that was Dr. Oz. He had Jussie yeah. on his show wow. and was like, look at this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And and then every there's still plenty of Republicans like, I'd rather have him in the, in the Senate than Fetterman. What, what, was, his, right? what right. was his justice for Was it like, hey, so tell us all about how you didn't lie about getting lynched? No, this was all like before it came out. He was yeah. just, he couldn't get him on TV oh. fast enough. We're going to go to Super Chats. This if you is haven't Mega already. Country. Are you, you glad Oz lost, by the way, to Fetterman? So I donate money, Fetterman. Yeah, Fetterman. <laughs> Smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel. Share the show with your friends. Head over to TimCast.com. Click join us because the members only show is going to be based AF and you want to watch it. So that'll be up around 10 p.m. But for now, we will read your Super Chats. 
Clint Torres, of course, the first of which I'd saying, howdy, people. Hi. Tim, great 4 p.m. segment. I've shared it as much as I can. I hope as many young folks as possible can watch it. That was the one where I talked about the woman who wanted to end herself because she had no, uh, she had no, she was depressed and whatever. She also I, got a psycho uh, therapist that should be ex yeah. excommunicated and lose their license Disbarred. for telling her that she, there's no hope. Mm -hmm. Watch the documentary on the blue zones. You know what blue zones are? No. It's where people live to be over 100. And like there's Japan. Yeah, Japan's got one. I think Italy Italy's. has one. And what there's one scene that's really great. And it's been a long time since I've seen it. So I'm probably getting it wrong. But it's something like there's like a 90 year old Japanese guy chopping wood. And they ask him, why are you chopping wood? You're 90. And he says, what? If I don't do it, who will? Yeah. One of the main components they found in all the blue zones as to why people live so long is that they have to. Because there's a job that must be done that they must do. Purpose. Yep. And so you have a 28 year old with no purpose and she wants to die. The, the uh, one of the most, one of the highest, uh, the, the time in a person's life where death is actually one of the more common, if not the most, is retirement. Mm -hmm. Retirement age is when a lot of people start, their health rapidly declines and yep. then they end up dying. Can I speak to this? Because especially for males, I can't speak for females, 26 to 29 is often a very difficult time because by that age, a lot of your friends have paired off. They start having kids. You don't know who you are. You know, you're going to make it yourself. I had a friend I was just talking to. He's obviously not that young. Or, well, I shouldn't say obviously. And if you're that age and you don't know what your purpose is and you're kind of floundering around, which is very, very emotionally tough to deal with, take an aptitude test, right? Take that test and you'll be, you see like what your brain is wired, like people in certain industries, and you're going to learn something about yourself and you mm -hmm. might find your purpose that way. It's mm -hmm. worth a shot. It's going to take is you 10 there minutes. one in particular you like? Aptitude no, test? but I took it in college and it said I should be a, a, either a broadcaster mm -hmm. or um, serial killer. And I ended up being both. Nice. Nice wow. job, dude. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Michael is the third volume of Inverted World, actually. I've been shadowing him. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's grab some more. All right. Buford says, Tim should talk about the group that runs it all. Yeah, the Illuminati. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Let's do yeah, it. That's right. The Illuminati. That's, right. of course, who he's referring to. Yeah. And no one else. For sure. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> who are those illuminated souls? Uh, Tim Jake says, the, is, is Michael's, is, are you cracking into the pizza finally? Yeah. Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. I thought you were going to eat Jeez. it earlier. No, I was going to be respectful to the show. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just, just make sure you push the mic away as you're chewing. Can you That's actually eat it through the Trudeau mask? Well, for mask? people with drives me crazy. <laughs> it's April Fool's so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, Tim Jake says, the last survivor of the USS, USS Arizona when it sunk at Pearl Harbor passed away today. Oh, wow. Louis, Louis Conter. Lieutenant Commander, retired, was 102. Rest in peace, sir. Wow. Jeez. Rest in peace. Let's go. Damn Dame says, I was promised Hillary Clinton. I guess I'll settle for the thought leader, Mr. Malice. Hillary Clinton. April Fool's. My, Jason, body, my body counts better than hers. Jason Dixon says, <laughs> I, know, I know it suspects. Jason Dixon says, please tell Michael Christ is king. Get triggered. Anarchists don't believe in kings. Thank you. This is my. Oh, I, I feel like it Andrew is. Andrew Schultz tried to pull this with me. It's too. monarchy propaganda. Right. Trying not to get not people to bow under their lord. Uh, not only that, to be the, the king. idea that I'm anti-Christian or don't like Christ is some of this weird kind of narrative. That not me specifically. It's this weird narrative that's taking place on the internet, and it's completely untrue. That that you are or that people in general Jewish people. Oh yeah, it's. Have it's they heard of Jews for Jesus? Well, I mean that, that's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> But it is, the, it is the weird thing where there are people who think saying Christ is king will trigger people. Yeah. It yeah. just makes me feel like people are subservient to the monarchy and they don't realize or it. Or that I don't think people should become better Christians. That's gr I know personally many people who found Christ and became better husbands, mm -hmm. better dads, better friends. All right. Great. I have a good one for you. Yeah. Jason Dixon says, Tim, please ask Michael how he feels about cops being gay and doing crimes. I, I don't know. I don't understand. You know, you know the leftist meme, be gay, do crime? Yeah, I know. But like, yeah. I don't know about how that refers. I don't know. Just I, I will <laughs> say one thing. I have gotten a lot more sympathetic to cops in their jobs because if you watch police body cam videos and the things that they have to put up with, it's like, okay, I get it. Like you see the yeah. guy chasing the other guy on PC. No, I just mean just dealing around. with like Karen. Oh, just like, like typical dude, idiots. The yeah, level of yeah, exhaustion yeah, yeah. trying to that. think about this, but in <laughs> real life with dudes that you're pulling over in your car, that level of fatigue must be <laughs> like oh, another it's, one it's, of these. It's, it's worse than that. Didn't uh, didn't like donut operator talk about this where it's like he had to deal with some like trashy guy who was like causing problems, and then he immediately gets a call to a baby that was smashed by a semi truck or something. Mm. I don't know if that was him or I, I heard oh the story. God. Yeah, like. You, you have to like imagine that the regular day of a cop, they're not surrounded by the nice, good people of their right. community. They're literally only going to the dregs of society. Rarely is a cop called because the cat is stuck in the tree. And they they have, call the fireman. They have to that. say sir or ma'am to these 
horrifically disgusting people who are berating them. Yep. Yeah. Man, my grandfather was a cop in the in New York City in the seventies, and oh, he was God. like, my job was basically just to sit with a dead body every day. He get called to another scene of a you know blood splattered living room, just death constantly. Oh, wow. He he retired and became a funeral uh, hearse driver. Wow. So I guess something about it was cool. All right, the Sig. Sig P says, I sent Shane a copy of The New Right a few years ago. Michael, put that's him right. on the spot and ask if he read it. Not yet. But I did just start listening to uh, The White Pill. Oh, that's better. Yeah. That's a better book. The White Pill? Yeah. That must be Darren. Shout out. Let's grab some more. Common Sense Fishing says, I heard there was a federal mandate or law passed that all chicken flocks need to be registered. A YouTube homesteader posted about it. Even small backyard flocks. Uncle Sam won't even let you have chickens and live by the river. I don't know. I didn't hear that. That sounds like dangerous territory. And I propose a new amendment to the Constitution. Number 27. Repealing the 19th. Uh, chickens. To get off my lawn. Be act. necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep, bear, and breed chickens shall not be infringed. Well, just, just chickens. You have a, a poultry. Let's do it. And water. Your right to collect rainwater. Let's you think, do it. You, you think <laughs> I'm going to let turkeys in here? And ducks? <laughs> Are, tur are turkeys considered poultry? I don't know, but chickens are based AF. <laughs> <laughs> You're so biased. You know, I, I, the cure for, the cure for um, depression is, is quite literally just backyard chickens. You know, Ben mm. Franklin wanted the turkey to be the state, the yeah. national bird. Yeah, yeah. That would have been oh, so the cool. Noble right turkey. They're like velociraptors. Yeah. If you've ever seen them in the wild, they and look they're crazy. Disgusting. They're yeah. the weird garbage. I sat with faces. one in South America about four, three feet away and his eyes, dude. I looked up at my grandma looking at him in the eyes, but his talons. I was like, but, he could literally yeah. eviscerate me right now. Mike, Michael, have you ever spent time just watching chickens? Yes. They are quite hilarious. Yes. There's not a single human, I believe, that could look at a chicken and watch them do chicken stuff and be upset. Yeah. I it's, don't understand. It's the noise. It's the five in the morning. Go, go. You hear the new rooster? I love it. Oh, go, go, go. That's like how this rooster screams. I love it. At 4.30 in the morning. Absolutely love it. Oh, go, yes, but I'm not talking go. about... Why? I'm not talking... I'll have what he's having. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, not, nice. I'm not talking about putting, putting the rooster next to your house. Yeah. I'm saying like when you watch chickens just like walking around and you throw in like a piece of fish and they mm -hmm. play rugby mm -hmm. and they're just goofy little bodies or like... One of our roosters, we call him Mr. Mutton Chops, keeps escaping. It's hilarious. And then he gets scared and he can't figure out how to get back in and you got to help him. They're like little morons. They're just so funny. I agree. I'm, I'm a yeah. huge animal person. Yeah. They're hilarious. Same. You we, have we have, uh, we have uh, uh, so we, we, we put up a pond <laughs> and already there are four toads in it and they've probably laid like 500 Toads eggs. or frogs? Toads. In the pond? Yes. Toads. Toads are, are terrestrial. Water. Toads live in water. They're, they're, frogs live in water. Mm, to toads, toads live in water. Toads live on land. That's why they toads call them toads. Live in water. I think that toads I'm go both ways. I think that toads go both ways, guys. There's some that live in water. Marine toads are one example. Well, but in oh, America, toads do not live in water as adults, but they require an unpolluted source of water to reproduce. And the toads we have live in the water. What, what species are they? I believe they're American toads, and they're called American toads. But American toads live on the land, and uh, but they breed in the water, and so they're probably in the water right now. Just for breeding, breeding yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, because it's spring, that's when they breed, mm -hmm. and so, so there's yeah. and then they have tadpoles, and they yeah, of course, yeah. uh, toadlets, toadlets, yeah, is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. no. Well, there's a whole bunch of them, and we're very excited, and they're hilarious. See, the thing they're is, very cute. They're a different yeah. kind of hilarious because in the middle of the night they scream louder than the roosters. Yeah, they have a crazy and you sound. And you you hear like just for a, for a ten minutes straight, Whoa. and it's just it's wild. And then we have a, a the guy next door, he has a, a big pond, and it is nuts. If like you'll probably hear this when you walk outside of the show, it is like Frog Manhattan, oh, yeah. like peepers, Frog nightclub, like the baby peepers or actual the adult big frogs. All, frogs all, 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 they're, 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 it's all toads yeah. but they're all just making noises and yeah. like they're, partying dude it's a nightclub they're i can't can i they are um looking for mates i don't yes. want to say the word it's nice yeah, yeah i want to get down yeah yep yeah they're just screaming like let's bang they want i could yeah. there's a lot of ways in their horny songs they want to let's we save it till the after show i want to <laughs> yeah no i want to get i want to get for the after show we got to get to the operation of this eisenhower it's gonna blow your mind oh yeah the the two toads that were uh, the one was laying eggs and the dude was on her back for two days straight. Yeah, two days. Bec you know That's why? Is that way another dude can't mate yep. with her. That's oh. the dude. They, he and the dude yeah. had his arms under her you arms, that, yeah. and she'd swim around, and he was just latched right. to her back. Yeah, yeah. I'm That's not clingy. It's just it's just in my nature. I'm not clingy. It was crazy because when we, <laughs> when I first saw the eggs, yourself. I thought I thought someone <laughs> threw like a lace into the pond. And I ignored it because from far away, it's like a black line. Yeah, yeah. And then we, uh, I, I saw the frog and I walked over 
And then I realized, actually, it was Allison who noticed first. Like, wait, I think those are eggs. And I was like, are you sure? And then we looked and we're like, holy. And there's an insane. Oh, yeah. Like three spots of them everywhere. And the female toad like never stops laying eggs. She's swimming around with the eggs coming out of her. It's yeah. Weird. Wow. Yeah. Let's read some more super chats. Earth is awesome. Yeah. The Earth is yeah. awesome. We uh, we put the pond in there specifically for toads and frogs. Biology too. It's so much better than video games. Oh, oh. By I could go on. A, I've been on Rogue and talk about deep sea stuff. I could do this all day. Oh, dude. Octo Nation, God's God's man. God's mistakes. War yeah. Shout out to Warren Carlisle. <laughs> yep. All right. Drunken ramblings with Aaron says regarding the 4 p.m. segment, there was nothing more harmful than telling millennials we are each special and can do anything we want to do. Well, we are specially different, like snowflakes, but. That doesn't mean that I you can do anything. You got to be a beast of a I man think, or a I, woman. What was it? Was it the boomers, the first generation, where the where the the parent didn't teach their kid how to do a job or something? They was it, or was it the parenting. industrial revolution? No, I think it's the, I think it's after the boomers. Like, yeah, they got burnt out on Vietnam and yeah, were like, just exactly. just be an artist. That's be the one. anything That's I could have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It used to be like, son, I'm going to teach you how to do my thing. And then it was, I'm going to work, go to school. Because the late out. '60s is when it became okay to tell your parents to go after yourself. I think that's when it switched, and it's like, Dad, you're you're the commies. It, all, being old became something to be embarrassed about, so it's supposed yeah. to source of wisdom. Older, yeah, that's, that's not that, even that, old. Yeah, it's that line from The Simpsons where Abe is like, "I used to be, with yeah, yeah. It. Then they changed what it was. Now what it is is scary, <laughs> and it'll happen to you too. It just keeps getting different. And it happened to The Simpsons. <laughs> it did. All right, true. Uh, Katarina Stacy says a suggestion for the 1000th episode. Tim does the entire episode in the style of Donald Trump. Anytime he slips up, each IR IRL member puts $5 into a pot, which Tim doubles at the end for a worthy cause. What n episode number are we on? Sounds like an extortion. Nine, nine, four. Oh, wow. So That's amazing. it's coming up. So who's going to be 1000? Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. He'll love that too. So that's next Tuesday. Oh, I thought wow. we were nine four seven. See you next nine, Tuesday. Nine, seven. <laughs> let's see. Let's let's see if I can pull up who's next maybe Tuesday. It won't be Trump if it's next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, Hitler. Yeah, bring him back, <laughs> Doug Mackey. Oh, okay. love the sound of that. There you go, Doug Mackey. The, Hopefully, he makes it. I don't know if I met. You mean Ricky Vaughn? The one thousandth episode. Is that who that is? Is that you're I talking so. about? Uh -huh. I'm checking the schedule right now. Ricky Vaughn, the 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 guy who got uh, going to jail for sharing a meme yeah, on I'm Twitter. Sure His real him. name is Doug Mackey. Oh, yeah, wow. must be him. Good thousandth episode. Sounds like it. Yeah. Was that yeah, we, we actually Here. were we actually were discussing a long time ago about having you for the 1000th episode. Oh, that's very sweet. But mm -hmm. April Fools is coming up and I was like I got to text Michael cuz this is this is his day. Yeah. It's, it's always I'm know, the biggest you, fool. You got any big things coming up this month by the way we'll probably talk about it after the show or Well, we'll read some more super yeah, chats and then we'll get into that stuff. See what you're up to. We'll grab some more. Adrian Curry says anti-kid propaganda. Oh, it's Adrian. Come on, acknowledge her. Yeah. Adrian yeah. Curry. Yeah. Right. Adrian Michael Mouse. Adrian Curry. Adrian so Curry. much. Anti-kid propaganda is a thing. Mass brainwashing. That life is better without children. Hi, Michael. Yes. <laughs> I love you. I love you, Adrian. And what a testament to a, but a she's woman. She's right. She's right. And here's here, like all these cat ladies. They're cat ladies for a reason. They want something to love and take care of. Yep. Mm. Yep. Dude, Adrian, man, she's got they it together. She, crazy early life. Just superstar um, model. And then just chose to live in the woods with their man. And I'm on a mountain somewhere and enjoy it. You forgot it the part where she married Peter Brady. Oh, and she married Peter Brady at one point. Yeah. I never met. I hear that was intense. All right, Hi, Adrian. Leland Taylor says, Ian, you may not understand, but the world needs more Ian Crosslands. Correct. Scores, Ian's Crossland. Scores of others agree. You are literally my family's favorite part of TimCast most days. I can't explain it, but your presence is critically important. Thanks. I think about reproduction because people are like, I want to have kids to reproduce <laughs> my, con my, my who I am, but... I this internet video is a form of reproduction, so maybe that the ideas can be transmitted without having to have kids. There's going to be like some dad, and he's going to have like a kid who's just like kind of like a normal kid, and then one day he's going to walk in, and the kid's going to have long hair and be wearing glasses. Yeah, and I wasn't the first one that did this. I saw some dude walking his dog in these Birkenstock sandals in like 2008, and I was like, I want to be like that guy. I want to walk around in the middle of the day and not have a job. I want to have a dog, a beaten. I want a big beard. I want to smoke weed, and I did it all. I feel and like then, I should wear this through TSA tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll just laugh and ask you to show your face for a second. I actually, I'll tell you a TSA story. I was uh, at that part where they show the passport or the, the, the whatever you have your ID and your boarding pass, and there's three of them. And the guy goes, "Oh, hey, I love you. I love your work. Oh, thanks." And the lady turns to me and goes, "Who is that?" I go, "I go, I'm, oh, I'm the guy who shut up Pulse." And he just oh, laughs. Wow. I always say when people say I recognize you, that's who I always say I am. And she just kind of laughed, and he's like, oh, "Okay." Or she looked confused. He laughed, and I'm like, "You know, I just admitted to like mass murder." And you're like, "Oh, get another plane. You're fine." Can I have your autograph? Yeah. yeah. Jeez, dude. It's all right. Grofty has posted a bunch of bocus emojis. Thanks, Grofty. Uh, I think about him. I haven't really. So, uh, 
Yeah. It was a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Bocus, we had on, we had him on a medication, and uh, he was supposed to have passed uh, like a year and a half ago. And then we put him on every medication we could, but he had underdeveloped kidneys and a bad heart. So we couldn't do any of the surgeries or not anything. And it's probably because uh, poor diet when during development and stuff like that, probably from his mom or whatever. But so what we did was one morning when we came in, his breath was really bad. It was obvious his kidneys had stopped working entirely. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people were taking care of him, but then he was gradually losing the ability to stand up. Oh, God. The next morning he couldn't get up at all and he was just groaning. So we brought him outside to see the chickens, laid him down in the grass. And then it took like 40 minutes. And then he just was. Oh, he died naturally. Okay, good. Okay, I like yeah, that. Yeah, people were telling me to bring him to the vet and give no, him no, injections. I like that. Yeah. No, he, as soon as we brought him out and laid him down with the chickens, his, he's like immediately like moving his head the, as much as he could. And his yeah, eyes yeah. are That's watching the chickens. Good, good. And, I like that. And, That's uh, very nice. Did well, you bury him somewhere? Yeah. We, okay, we good. gave him a nice grave in Freedom like And we, we put a little piece of granite and we're going to put something on it. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, let's get a piece of quartz crystal. It's wild how many people were like, just bring him to the vet now before it's too late. And I was like, for what? And like to put him down. And I was just like, I don't think while he's suffering, the, the, the nicest thing is to have him in this sterile environment with strange or people. Or put him in that box that he's going to be freaking out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think laying him in the grass so he can watch the birds and slowly fade into oblivion. That's, is, that's, that's cat heaven. You're surrounded by birds that you can hunt. Also better I can't even you. fly very well. Like, well, you, I, maybe you. it was torture because he's like, I can't get out. <laughs> I can't. No, I think it's better for you too. Cause like the last memories of having yes, to take your nice cat, yes. this thing you love to the sterile environment. Yeah. You don't have to make that decision. It's yeah. been made for you. That's much, I, would, I like that's much calmer. Yeah, that, I was nice like, sir. and then my, what I, I wanted to do a Viking funeral, but it's just hard to find people to, to you know, assault. The, I don't want to say the word. Well, no, we put them in well, a little boat. Yeah, we don't have to do that part. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Well, that's the, what makes it the Viking funeral. <laughs> the Viking funeral is we put them in a little boat. It. We tie a rock to one end and we throw the rock into the middle of the pond, which we have. Drives the boat into the middle of the pond. And then we take like a little, a little dart gun and a little tiny cat sized flaming arrow to ignite it and. But I, I just figured it was too complicated and difficult to do, I so like I just dug a grave. His bones are closer to the surface, and they're made of hydroxyapatite. They've got some crystal in them, which will vibrate, and um, that's better than him being at the bottom of a lake somewhere. Yeah, I looked exactly. Yeah, we have a new, we have a new cat. What's it called? Seamus. Really? Seamus one. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah, Seamus two is a cartoonist. Is the, does a cat eat only potatoes? No, uh, not yet. He's actually. It was funny because we captured him. He was in the garage. And it's, I like the cats who don't get he, captured. Here's the crazy thing. He was born right around the time they diagnosed Mr. Bones. Oh, okay. So he was about a year old and, and I saw him sleeping in our garage because we would leave it open. And so one day I came over and I just closed the garage capturing him and he was freaking out and he was very angry. After a couple of weeks of Stockholm syndrome and that. removing his testicles, we brought him into the house and it's absolutely hilarious how the transformation was instant from the I'm terrified of you get away from me to the rolling around on the carpet and Aww. complaining and demanding food. Is he friend is he's around? I can yeah, play yeah, him. Yeah. He's, he's friendly. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. He's super great. nice. I want to see him. Yeah, he yeah. yells, he demands, he's a cat. I, I love I love animals. Let's grab a couple more of these here, uh, super chats. Patrick Kent says if Kennedy is allowed to debate Trump and Biden in a nationally televised debate, he will win the presidency. He has passed on so many opportunities to run for public office, and he picked now because he saw a path to victory. Interesting. I, I, I'm not 100% on that. I do like the idea that there's a possibility a debate between RFK, like RFK could do really well. I'm going to be honest, though, and I mean no disrespect, but his voice will be an issue in that debate between Trump and, and Biden. I, I also think that for a huge percentage of the population, let's be extremely conservative, say 40, anything about questioning the vaccine, you're absolutely a complete crazy person. Yeah. Like they, they, they do not hear a single word. They shut down completely. It's a total non-starter for them. Yeah. I've seen a lot of mothers change their minds after like, uh, the okay. kids, you know, I, I'm just saying from my circle, you know, so it's not a lot, but I've seen a lot of mothers who were very pro riot, pro vaccine in the beginning. And then once they turn to the kids being like, now they got, it, they're like, oh, screw all of what this. What I'm very curious about is who he takes more from trump or biden, biden. you think so i mean especially with who he picked for his yeah. vp I that, think was it nicole shanahan or whatever yeah, I, I don't, yeah. I, that i couldn't wrap my head around. no no question it's all progressive far yeah. left policy he said indigenous people's day instead of columbus day he is targeting the left okay he's smart on so many things but wrong on some of the most important stuff unless he's trying to help trump win yeah i don't think he's doing that either though no i think he wanted to run for the democratic ticket because he wanted to win and yeah. they screwed him over and he's like i'll run anyway no he's just stubborn yeah What's the downside for him, right? 
No, he's going to sell books. And yeah. His, his Fauci book is incredible. It's a terrifying and, and also horror book. B- uh, make himself a bigger platform, get right. more of a voice, which yeah. is, I don't Huge begrudge him that at all. Awareness to vaccine awareness, people yeah. that have been injured and things like yeah. that. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's grab this from uh, BBFC Project. Tim, it's Danny here. We shot your 50 caliber together years ago in West Virginia on one, on one of the original Cast Castles. I launched my campaign on Give, uh, Give Send Go called Crafting Legacy Honoring Sacrifice. It is a veteran-owned furniture company to combat suicide. Oh, that's wonderful. Awesome. Mm. Wonderful. Here, here. Amazing. That, one more time for everybody who's listening. It's Crafting Legacy Honoring Sacrifice. Search for them on Give, Send, Go. Crafting with a C. Crafting. Yeah. Yeah, we were in uh, uh, we were in West Virginia, and we fired the Barrett M82. Okay. It was fun. Wow. Yes. Not that, it's, it's not that crazy. The, the what's, what's the other one? The RN-52 or something? That's a breech loader. I'm, I'm probably getting the numbers wrong. Breech loading 50 BMG. A lot of recoil right near your shoulder. So we put padding there. But uh, the uh, Barrett, which is semi-automatic, no, it's not really that bad. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of recoil, but the, the, the mechanism absorbs most of the, uh, the energy. So, All right, let's grab a couple more Super Chats before we get out of here to that members only show. Let's see. Munkin Training says Havana syndrome is real. Russia and China have the tech. A Marine buddy of mine was an embassy guard. One of his crew was a victim. Hmm. Mark oh, Dice wow. did a vid on it a year back. It's microwave tech pointed at your brain. <laughs> Crazy. That is scary That's stuff. That's like one version of it that we know right. about microwave tech. Howling Abandon says you guys need to do an extra episode this week. So episode 1000 falls on the Monday, Monday episode or Monday expose. I don't know. My friends. Smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, but more importantly, head over to TimCast.com, click join us, become a member, because at uh, in just a few minutes, the members only uncensored show will be appearing on that front page. Not so family friendly, but very funny, and you definitely want to hang out. We take callers from the Discord server. That means if you're a member, you can actually submit questions and potentially call into the show. You got to be a member for at least six months, or you can skip the line by signing up at $25 per month. It's basically a screening process to keep the weirdos out, but uh, but do it. The members only show is going to be very, very fun. You can follow the show at Timcast IRL. You can follow me personally at Timcast. And uh, Michael's currently chewing. So Shane, do you want to shout talk, anything I'll out? I'll talk out for him. Yeah. I want to hear him. <laughs> My name's talk. Michael Malice. Um, I do a bunch of stuff, uh, <laughs> like books and other things. Uh, is, that, is that what I sound no, like? No, 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 no. That's the I was machine. Just, I was in a rush. I was in. You want to do this? I gotta dance? go slow. You no. want to do this? Dance? I should not pick a fight with you of all people. I love you, Michael Malice. Michael, do you want to shout anything out? Uh, my latest book is whitepillbook.com, off to Japan on Friday, and I'm, I think I'm going to have to drop two more books this year, but I'm doing a uh, crowdfunding. Hopefully, Eric July will return my calls um, hmm. for my graphic novel, and maybe I'll launch it here. Do you have any adv- any knowledge about the graphic novel? Any, any Yes, d- it's a details? script I wrote 20 years ago about a band from the 80s, um, and it's a very great story, and it's one of the only bands other than Guar where the music is irrelevant to the story. Is it, is it fiction? Sweet. Uh, non-fiction. Non-fiction? Yeah. Sweet. But wait, wait, is it cool. a script you wrote? Weird. I wrote a script, and then the keyboard player for the band did the animation for American Splendor, the movie, hmm. and through that I met Harvey Picar, who wrote the graphic novel about me, Ego oh. Hubris. Wow. Wait, 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 I'm trying to understand this. Harvey, dude. You, your graphic novel is, a, is, is based on a script you wrote? Correct, a screenplay. A screenplay, but yes. the screenplay is non-fiction. Correct. But does that mean that you wrote the lines for people or what? Yes, but I mean, yeah. I, I don't understand why you're, you're confused. Oh, I see. I, I, I see. Would... It's, a, it's, it's, it's like a biopic or like a Yes, fiction. exactly. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, that sounds awesome. It was a pleasure to be here with you, Michael. Uh, I did just start reading The White Pill and it's awesome so far. Thank you. Um, I, so yeah, I'm a father and an expert and I got a book out right now called Yes, Your New Baby is a Savage. It's peer reviewed. Uh, everyone, Google agrees. All the experts agree. It's the best book about parenting. That's at shanecashman.com. I got a very important book coming out uh, for pre-orders at the end of this month. That's called The Year of the Pariah. It's all my. It's a collection of controversial profiles of people. And, Am um, I in that one? You're not in that one. You're in volume two. Okay. Uh, after the serial killing's done. Second comes right after <laughs> yeah, first. That's right. <laughs> Finish the job. Uh, and then uh, I'll be hosting a live show soon. It'll be Sunday evenings. I can't wait to do it. So nice. it was awesome to be here. Yeah, it was a really fun show. I wish it could have kept going. The bucko part was really sad, but uh, other than that, it was it super gonna fun. It is going to keep going, baby, in yeah, the uncensored right. It's going to get hotter and hotter. Um, I want to shout out John Fetterman. Thank you for reminding me. Love you, John. <laughs> Whoa, Gazinia. Michael Mouse <laughs> and the White Pill. <laughs> and I think that's yeah, that's everything else. That's all right. I wanted to get in touch with. See you later, everyone. Cool. Thanks for coming, Michael. Uh, camera's a lot of focus. There it is. Uh, Shrek 2 is upside down because uh, it's like the magnum opus of our country and we're in crisis. So if anyone's asking, anyways, I'm sure.com. Let's get to the after show. I'm going to title the after show one of the naughty things we weren't allowed to say. Check it out at timcast.com. We'll see you all there. <laughs>